Oh, okay. Well, that was the wrong button, sorry. Maybe that one will work. <laughs> no. What, it's one of them. gotta go for the red one, not the blue one. Oh, okay. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the yellow one? What's the yellow one do? I haven't pushed that one yet. Oh, okay. Ooh. Uh, we gotta get distracted. These peanuts are gonna get distracted out there, I tell ya. We're in here, not They're out there. They're already distracted. Oh, okay. So we, this is going to be the Fair Dinkum Drongo Award night, so we're going to try to go through all the people. I'm not going to use a title for that yet, but we'll just say people. Out there that are fitting for the award. We have a few nominees around, which people should know who they'd be. Um, and we'll have any um, nominees posted in the peanut gallery if anyone wants to put a nominee out there for for one. And the actual people might be in the pe in the peanut gallery themselves, so that's a start. Oh god! <laughs> so do we play? So we just play a video, we'll play a video to start with, and obviously we'll grab, you know, who to start with. And that'll set this, that'll set the bar. What? Don't push the right issue. <laughs> what, what, what from the left, John? I don't know that one. <laughs> Wait, what, the third one? Between the third one and the fifth one. Okay, where are we? Where's that video? Where would that video be if I got it? Uh, I'm gonna find it. You know I don't have it ready. You know there's no plan here. <laughs> we'll just all breathe into our microphones while we're waiting. Like, 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 like if I ever had a plan, you'd be shocked. <laughs> it would be truly a... a uh... <laughs> New era. Maybe Alan could could read a bit of uh, one of his books to us while 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 you're figuring that out. I think I I really I really kind of wanted to save that for um, oh for, for reading with my grandson. But oh okay, maybe, okay. But maybe we could have an ABC. <laughs> you could read one of those ABC books to us live on camera, Alan. That'd be funny. Do we want the ABCs of biology or the ABCs of engineering? Or ABC of engineering. Okay, then. I suppose, mm. I suppose you want to be able to see it on the camera, don't you? So. Oh, wait till I pin you. you. Yeah, wait till I get you pinned. Okay. There you go. And I'll change it around the other way. Oh, how do I get ABCs of engineering? There we go. How did I get it round the other way? Like I had it for Paul. Okay, I can't. I can't do it the other way. I can't see how that works. A is for amplifier. <laughs> An amplifier makes a signal bigger. <laughs> B is for battery. A battery gives power to electric circuits. Mm. Sorry, this is quite difficult because I'm having to read it. <laughs> because the camera, the camera shows it backwards um, on my screen. Oh, here's one that's going to be good because it's going to be harder for me to pronounce. C is for Carnot engine. The Carnot engine is an idealised form of heat engine. D is for dielectric. A dielectric is a material that can be polarised. You can make an electric building. I can read the print almost. Hmm. Well, yeah. you know, if I, could, if I hold it in the, if I hold it still enough and in the right place, I could read the. 
Went to the yeah, I know. Oh. Yeah. That's okay. The big the big words are easier to read. E is for electricity. Electricity is the flow of electrons. Well, I can read that part for is you. The flow of electrons. Well, I can read that for you, so if you're flipping it around. F is for force. A force is force. any push or pull. Yeah. Or twist or squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but 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 I I think we can go with just push and pull for the for for the pre language children. You well, mean the, well, the flat earthers? Yeah, well Bandy's got it down pat he has for push and pull. <laughs> <laughs> G is for gear. A gear is a mechanical. I was reading that. A gear is a mechanical part that transfers force. You read the top bit, and I'll read the bottom bit. H is for hydraulics. A hydraulic machine transfers force using liquid. I is for inductor. An inductor is a device that stores energy in a magnetic field. J is for jig. A jig help, helps keep parts of a project in place. K is for keystone. A keystone is the top block of an arch. L is for lever. A lever is a simple machine used to increase force. It was yeah, G for dollar. density on buoyancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> door, door, door. Door. Basically, a transformer is just two um, inductors wound on the same piece of metal. So, it's, it's not wrong. It's just, it's, it's just something that I think gets gone into in the tiny little bit of um, text at the bottom. M is for multimeter. A multimeter is a tool used to measure electric circuits. N is for nanotube. Carbon nanotubes are light, strong shapes made of carbon atoms. Um, um, o is for um, oh. um, <laughs> the unit of measure for electrical resistance is called um, um, um. and um, P is for pipette. Pipette, where is she? I didn't see her. Oh, that's Pi Parrot, sorry. A pipette is a lab tool that helps measure the volume of a liquid. Oh, don't put your phone up to this. I've got no idea what it'll be. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that that QR code basically says everything that, everything that it says on this page. <laughs> yeah, probably. You like to try? Have you got one of them on your phone for to do that? Q is for QR code. Yeah, I have, but... Um... A, a QR code is a two-dimensional barcode. I've never tried one to, to, to see what it does. Yeah. R is for requirements. Engineering projects need requirements to make sure everything works correctly. Hmm.
S is for screw. A screw is a simple machine used to hold things together. I thought that was in prison guard. <laughs> T is T is for tolerance. Tolerance shows how much wiggle room there is. <laughs> 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 And if you can't if you can't wiggle it, that's good. That's, that's good. <laughs> yeah. U is for units. Units help communicate meaningful measurements. V is for viscosity. The viscosity of a fluid measures how thick it is. I could really reinterpret that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could reinterpret half the sentences of this book. Uh, Terry, you, you might get a little triggered now. Oh, no. Because we've got W. And what do you think W is going to be before? Uh... Oh, no, 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 stop camera, stop camera. Did you hide Delete, everything? delete, 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 move. How do you get w rid of that? Is a spanner is a hand tool that helps turn nuts and bolts. <laughs> X is for xenon. Xenon is a chemical Zeon? that helps make bright... Shut up. <laughs> Bright camera flashes. I don't know how to pronounce it either. I don't know if it's how we pronounce it. Or how it's we should pronounce it. Uh, it's pronounced, yeah, it's, it's sound. Yeah, but these Americans, they don't know how to pronounce words, so... Yeah, no, the Americans pronounce it the same. Oh, do they? Oh, okay. I've always pronounced, heard it pronounced Xeon. Okay. But uh, our math is all the same, so, so, I mean, that's all that matters. Yeah. Why is for yield? Yielding is when something doesn't bounce back. And Clerks finally, have a lot of yields. Z is for zoning. Zoning helps local government, city planners and civil engineers plan how cities should grow. Oh, what a good book. I think, you, I think yeah. you'll learn something from that, Alan, when you read it through. Yeah, it's um... Oh, it's not for you? <laughs> no, 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 it's for, um... well, it's, it's for me to read it. it David, that, you, you added an R into that word. Sorry. Oh, now how do I do that? Is that it? No, I broke it. Oh, I've got a donkey now. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, we have a um, a, cyber, a sleeping warrior. <laughs> Is there a question? Did you post a question, Paul? For that for Did that you? one? I'll have to see. Yeah, I'm scrolling back. How far back was it? Quite Just a bit. A bit. <laughs> uh, I should have paused the chat. <laughs> Yes, John Rapp. Z was an odd one. It, that <laughs> was really stretching. All right, okay. Uh, today's scientist is considered a gatekeeper and has well-developed skills in measuring the velocity of gas molecules. Initials M something apostrophe last name D. Oh got apostrophe in these first name. That's also sense. a second part, just below that too, Terry. Oh, was there? Oh, okay. Said to be able to break one of the most established laws of physics. This character has dark powers, not to be west with, messed with. Who am I? Oh, geez, that one's a hard one. Has anyone had a go at it yet? No I don't one? think so.
Blue. <laughs> Blue <laughs> I, like Fred, I like Fred Knott's comment. Terry, I'll gladly attack SE's ideas as soon as he has one. Uh, all these claims that Gary's coming up with that he's got no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, but but I mean it's it's not the same copy paste as normal, so it's it's good. Mm. I bet you everyone's got oh, their yeah, finger yeah. on the trigger out there with him because he hasn't got a spanner. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably why why he's actually having to type out. Uh... I I notice our Scandinavian friends are pointing out that the book is missing a few letters. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, SE wants to do the dumbest uh, ball of this year. This is I, not, I that's mean, not how it works. You know, you know, just 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 because you uh, have correct understanding of the Earth shape does not mean that you're intelligent. So I, I'm sure we could find some. I'll just share this internally so you can see where I'm at. For this guy he did we all we all looked at that one <laughs> that one was, was uh, disturbing and funny yeah, yeah. so we uh, how long does these go for that one's oh, the 20 <laughs> his battery life that's going to run out on these two and then he's got oh, that yeah. one there do you, do you oh, want to leave yeah. any for thursday or would you, we could play the whole three of them T terry you know I've actually got a book about that last one. This one, quantum theory. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got a book. I'm, I've got a book that um, introduces um, people of limited mental capacity to to, to, you know, to quantum mechanics. We'll, we'll play. We'll play a couple, but we won't play them back to back. <laughs> No. Particle, P A R T I C A L. Okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go get a drink if we're gonna be watching Lindsay. I I can't yeah. deal with him sober. Yeah. So some may understand how Earth is flat, with a question mark. So we'll leave that one ready. Oh good. Blue knows who my name is, by the way. So. Really. Oh, it's not. Yeah. yeah, it's not that hard, is it, Blue? <laughs> no. Oh, he did it in the internal to everyone. I was wondering what that name was. Yeah. <laughs> I read the name first and the question after. <laughs> question after. <laughs> Didn't correlate the two between. Them. Whoops! I should have. Should have made it private. I yeah, that was, yeah, it was supposed to go to Paul. Oh, yeah, that's, that's all right. Um, dumbest dumb, dumb baller. Uh, well, yeah, you've got. You what do you got reckon? Kent, you've got Kent in that group, haven't you? Kent Hovin. Oh. He's a baller. Yeah. He's pretty dumb. Extremely. They say he's putting rumpus. But, but at least he's not. But at least he's not stupid enough to think the Earth is flat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dapper Dino does some some really good videos on him, and so does uh, I think uh, what's the other guy, the Rhino. Yeah, Vice Rhino, and yeah. also um, Polygio, Polygia, Polygia, and of course, um, oh, the, the other Canadian guy, um, top hat and funny and three D glasses. Oh, oh, um, Logic. Yeah. Project. So we and of wait. Course there's Hovind the younger as well. So who yeah, were, yeah. who were we waiting for on the panel to get back to, for some reason? It, it was probably me. I I got my scotch. I. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the only way I can deal with Lindsay. And um, yeah, move your monitors back and everything. Make sure you got up mitts. Yeah. Oh, I've got my oven mitts. Oh, I can't say it I'm properly. Thinking... Blue's the only one that knows how to say all that stuff properly. I, I, I think I'm really glad I didn't open my bottle of scotch now. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I, think... I can't afford to drink it all in one in one session. 
Right. <laughs> I wouldn't drink it all. I don't know why I'd get through that bottle. Ah, <laughs> oh, here we go. Warning, warning. Severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out the oven mitts. Push the monitors back out of punching range. Let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. Where is he? Oh, shit. Welcome. Pretty good in this room, considering I've changed the lights. <laughs> changed for the worse. <laughs> I just thought we'd run over a few things today. Nothing in specific, nothing specifically, but we'll just touch on a few subjects. One of them is the... Um, Does he have to scratch his ass while he's talking? Us, that it's 10,000 kilometres from Probably. the Arctic centre to the equator. So if that's 10,000 kilometers, that means the, uh, you know, that would be the radius, right, of the circle. So around the equator, that would make it 62,832, 62,832 kilometers around here. How, uh what is the actual kilometers for the equator? For us? For the normal globe, not this crap? Uh, are you showing the video out to the peanuts, Terry? Oh. Oh. Oh shit. Oh, oh shit. I don't, I don't know it off the top it's of my head. Ten, it's approximately 10,010 kilometers for a quarter of the way around the circumference. I, I, I clicked the red button instead of the blue button, Jinx you, sorry. Here we go. Yeah, that sounds about right. Equator. So if that's 10,000 kilometres, that means the, uh, you know, that would be the radius, right? Of the circle. Yep, so that would be. around the equator, that would make it 62,832 62,832 kilometers around here. Yeah, we measure it at only 40,000 kilometers. And they're telling us, they're telling us, it's only 40,000 around here, around there. Because right. it is only 40,000. <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 around, around which ring? Because he went around the outside and then he went around the inside. He went around here, around here. Those are two different circles. Which one? <laughs> the, the, one in the, the one in the middle. The yes. one that we call the equator, which is 10,000 10, mm -hmm. and 10 kilometers from the center point that, that, that we call the North Pole. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be, that, that's the R value of a, of, of a circle. And um, the circumference of that circle is... Um, 62,000 and change kilometers. When we measure the circle, it's only 40,040 kilometers. Yeah. That's a problem. I mean, only if you believe in the flat earth. Well, yeah. <laughs> but that's a problem. That's a problem for Lindsay because he believes in the, he believes in a flat earth that's circular and centered on the North Pole. Yes. As we well know. And that one does kind of really hurt them. Yeah, when I say them, those that believe that it's a pizza. On a ball and they're saying it's 10,000 kilometers from the Arctic to the equator. But whether they think it's a ball or what, what is he pointing that, like that for? At the end of the day, it's still that measurement from there to there. They're telling us it's 10,000 kilometers. I'd go with that, but at the end of the day, that's the radius from that diameter it would be 62,800 uh, kilometers. What's going on there? Um, that's the one thing we can rely on. Everything I understand, that's the one thing we can rely on is this, this measurement here. It's the one science works on because it's the equator too. So, what the, huh? 
it just went from pointed from out. Who's right? Who's going to find out for us? Going to trust science or what? Anyway, um, because at the end of the day, trust that measurement. This this comes into it. So Whatever that is. I'll show you something. Who's seen this in alchemy? Despite what it says. <laughs> That is that supposed means... to be uh, Robosa or whatever? I've got no idea. I've never seen it before. The the snake eating its own tail. I don't know what the two triangles are, but the, it looks like the snake eating its own tail. All right. So from, from, from looking at what's written on the whiteboard, I believe they're supposed to be a split octahedron. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know. He said something about alchemy, so... Uh, yeah. It's referring to the flat earth. Is it? <laughs> Jeez, that's a, a bold claim. I, isn't it? I, I, Point, points, to, it. points to an image and goes refers to a flat earth. Yeah, that's it. I, I didn't see anything flat earth through in there, but. Uh, oh, he'll explain uh -huh. it. it, it, it. This, this is what it is. You see, I haven't drawn this to scale, but obviously it goes like this. <laughs> Sorry, he made me choke on my coffee. He made me choke on me coffee because he said he didn't draw it to scale. <laughs> Wish he had. Would have kept him busy for a while. Mm. <laughs> I wish he wouldn't say stuff like that when I'm drinking yes. me coffee. How, how is it so difficult to draw some circles to scale where you have two concentric circles one of which is half the radius of the other well they, they don't believe in angles so they can't use a compass the the thing that you use to draw circles not not the one that tells you where north is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So you were explaining that one to the flirters, weren't you? Not to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just in case, uh, you know, any anybody was uh, having right. trouble with. This, this is how it works. What? It's just drawing it on there. The two triangles here and there. There's the gap. The gap is the tropics. What? I know I'm not supposed to have you pause it at yeah, I know. less than 30 <laughs> seconds, but, but the, those triangles are different than the other triangles, like, by a lot. Mm. That's, that's, all, that's all I have to say, because if I say anything more, I'm just... Well, they're not even, the, yeah, the same, they're not the same size as he's drawn them. <laughs> <laughs> But the shape doesn't correlate to anything. It doesn't. It's just draw, just drawn it on there. He could have drawn any shape on there. Well, he did say it. He said it was not to scale, didn't he? Oh, Jesus. Boy, boy, was he ever right about that? Yeah. <laughs> now, this, this triangle here, that's the pitch of the great Khufu Pyramid. You know, some sorts will go 51.5, some say 51.2, 51.83, some say 51.83, but uh, you take this, yeah, rub it out. 360 mean divided by 7 equals that. Whoa. Seven of what? This, Save that for your fans only, Terry. Make up the circle. Right? But if you come back out here, follow that down, and draw that as, a, as one big triangle, you get two more, right? <coughs> that then becomes nine. You now can I have you pause nine, for a second? 
He, he, he wrote some numbers, and, and I don't know what the numbers are for. Maybe I wasn't paying it close enough attention. Maybe he explained it. He, was, he, he said wrote it was some the, numbers. He said it was the measurement of a certain pyramid. Or oh, okay. And, and, then, and then he just erased them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he erased it's that, the, yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the elevation angle of the sides of, Kuf, of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. Oh, okay. Uh, and, 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 of course, the... They're they're not exactly the same on all, on all four sides, are they? So no, you know, there is a slight because tolerances, as we heard earlier, are a thing. Um, so you know, there's a couple of different there's, there's there's some different values for the slope. Yeah. So he wrote down some of the values. It's it's funny. It's it's almost like over you know, centuries, our ability to measure things has become more precise and, you know, they, they couldn't make as precise uh, angles and uh, measurements in the past. And so nowadays uh, our stuff is better than it used to be. Yeah, although, although I think they did act, they, in, in, my, in my humble opinion, they did bloody well laying out those. Oh, it's, no, God, it, it's, it's, I, I mean... Yeah, it's it's amazing, and 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 I mean there there are other monoliths or whatever that are also incredible, right? For for when they were made, I, but I mean you know uh, science and technology improves uh, as long as you understand it and don't deny it, and we get better. Yeah, or you can believe in a flat Earth. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Somebody said something. I heard it. Play. Press it. Physical numbers that we do not see and understand. Physical numbers we up, don't see. Okay. To make up the full <laughs> perimeter of the, Letting it go. the, the southern <laughs> the southern part of the um, flat Earth. It's all beyond the human. And mind understanding it's the non-physical we do not see that's what that, that that's what that is referring to because the the, the snake represents the magnetic field the <laughs> is under this magnetic field what, what? oh dear god oh <laughs> god no, i'm just taking a shot you guys keep going yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> i might have to go and crack a beer i think oh. Lindsay has got to be Lindsay has got to be a retired police officer. Everything he does <laughs> ends up looking like a fucking donut. <laughs> it represents round for a starter, the round flat earth, and the magnetic field, the snake, the beast. It's the magnetic field. Done a lot of videos on that. That's and that's the two triangles. I can't These work out how he connects. In sacred geometry, numbers, the non-physical numbers. As Tesla said, if you understand the numbers 369, you will find the keys to the universe. That's where I started, understood how the moon and all that works. Um... Get what that was about. <laughs> <coughs> 3D. The rest of us, it's okay, Lindsay. Yeah, yeah. The angles of this 3D, all the sides up to it. <coughs> That's just one little thing. There's a there's a uh, diagram of inside here. Is it how the planets sit like this? On top of one another? <laughs> just like this. Yeah, that's right. Glass. Yeah, it, it's sitting in there like that, but we we see it on these angles. So if you can imagine one the planet here, and what's happening is the other one comes around. <coughs> it, they sit like that. Yeah, but one view, yes. But what about from a different view, a different orientation? If you're on a flat earth, 
does it actually wobble around? It, 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 oh, that's where he fli that's where he flies his arms around or something. Parahelium, apahelium, whatever you call it. Yeah. What's this? So this saw something on uh, YouTube. It's starting to wake up. Things like um, deviation in orbits. Deviation in orbits. They have the sun there and they think they're all doing this. It's not the sun they're going around. They're going around the black hole. The black hole at the centre. And it appears it's doing this from this angle we get. If something's going around a black hole and you're looking at it from a side or on an angle on the side you wouldn't the planet disappear on the other side of the black hole because you couldn't see the planet because of the black hole uh no not not uh quite um because the gravitation uh gravitational effect around black holes is so immense you actually can see behind them um it's because it gets warp warped around or whatever um, so actually, unlike, you know, um, like going behind a solid object and you not being able to see it, you'd probably see it, but it'd be off to the sides or above it or, you know, um, somewhere in, in, in a different position. But, um, I mean, there, there would be so many, like, you can kind of get a stable orbit around a black hole, but there'd be so many other problems if that was true. You could actually see multiple copies of it, and we have seen that, uh uh behind very massive galaxies wow you could see more than one of them yeah was, wasn't there just some some uh proof of that that happened earlier this year where they uh saw a supernova the fourth supernova finally appear due to some gravitational lensing of a galaxy yeah yeah oh i missed that one Uh, it's it's the same supernova, but it appeared in four different places in the sky. Wow. Oh, skydiver's late. Damn gravity. <laughs> From the sky, the, the elliptical look. The elliptical look. The sun is, in fact, would be, if it appeared to go like that, the sun... The sun would be on the track, but because the sun moves ahead of it, they never get they're never catching the sun. It's only the sun catches the planet because the sun is on the perimeter of the black hole, and it's always racing ahead of all the other celestial bodies outside of it in the white in the in the um, cocktail glass. So the planets are. They sit on this boundary wall out here as it gets bigger and bigger, <coughs> comes out. And they're coming around heading, heading for the sun, but the sun's always shooting ahead. It's the moon that's outside the uh, sun. That's why we get that going further, way out further than the sun. In the, uh, what is he saying? The moon's outside of the sun? That, well, eclipses wouldn't work, that's for sure. The bridge in there. So this is what it looks like, they're looking at it side view. This is the magnetic field out here. So we've got the vacuum suction back down here creating the electrical circuit, straight down there. Milky Way is out there. All out so sucking causes electrical circuit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or vacuum. Shocking. <laughs> it doesn't matter either way. Right here in the magnetic field, around around the sun, and here, then there's your background stars. We need a term for that. Um, mm. What else have we got? Sucktricity. That's what it is. <laughs> um, Sucktricity. Sucktricity. <laughs> uh, blue. YouTube. <laughs> video um, all about the uh, he calls it sacred geometry but he's a, <coughs> he's a spinning baller so the whole thing regards the spinning ball you know I can make the whole video represent the flat earth 
There's no difference. That's the stupid thing about it. They want you to think you live on a spinning ball on the side. Hang on, Terry. Did he just quote sacred geometry and say it was done by some baller? I mean, it probably was, but who well, cares? You know, sacred, you know who sacred geometry does that? Say, oh, it's that. Um, it's the space juice guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Geometry. Yeah. Uh, Artem, uh, patch. Like, yeah, patchwork patch. or whatever. Yeah, I forget his real name. Uh, but but isn't isn't it the the guy who said he talked to Floth or whatever the the Egyptian god that that came up with it? Well, like I, I like fifty no years ago or something like that. Got all that crap from, but um, yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of it comes from supposedly ancient Egyptian stuff. So, you know, what with what, what with his his Egyptian physics. Um, hot kettle black. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's John saying? Skydiver Tanner was late because he was on his way. He found out gravity is not a force. He stopped falling and had to air swim down. Signed, Skydiver Tanner's mum. Oh, okay, that was the note from Skydiver. Okay. <sighs> Sideways on a spinning ball. They think this is more logical, living like this and like this, than on a flat plane. This is floating out there in la la for them, spinning at all sorts of speeds, flying but and now he's and now he's speed. thinking it. Well, you're living on the outside of la la la. Hey, he can't he can't quote somebody else's quote. Let's see, I wouldn't stand for that. Outside of it. You close the atmosphere, of course, but that's all garbage as well. That's another story. Instead of just living vertically on a flat surface out there in La La Land. It sounds more logical standing on a flat surface, doesn't it? No. Nah. Living on the side of a ball. <coughs> what am I getting at? Oh, so anyway, yeah. So it's just a joke. And it, they mentioned... Are you, um, yeah. <laughs> Talk about the great just stop it there. The, He's right. Yeah, yeah, joke. yeah. He pointed to the board and said, "Just a joke." Yeah. <laughs> Doing it swabble like this, and that's what it does. It's a vortex. Of course, we'll do that. <laughs> Which way? Choke point where the sun is. Negative, positive, all the negative goes up to the sun, flows up here, and comes out positive. Yeah, with me, I'm all over the place, I know. But uh, I've seen this, now this happens in the magnets. You can get that effect if you use two magnets. Ferrocell fluid and stuff. Helps you observe it, but um, you'll get that you'll get that image if the uh, if the uh, top upper magnet is up higher, I think, or on, on a slight angle. Because you've got the elliptics, the um yeah, the elliptics, perihelion. Yeah, perihelion thing. Perihelion, aphelion. Yeah. But uh, you'll find it in, in magnets. If you lower the magnet, um, that 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 um, what would you call that shape? That shape shape parts and splits and forms its forms the outer. It spreads out and flows around the outer perimeter, the southern field. That's when the sun goes from aphelion to Perihelion, the magnetic field, because it's all magnet, magnet. That was a bit of no, word uh, salad in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, plasma, magnetic, it's all electrons. So it's facing up. 
facing up. So Magnetic got that, electrons. Got there yeah. For the northern summer, but as soon as it comes <laughs> past equilibrium equinox, it's being up there, get the equinox mm. down. Hey, we got the way down. in. The magnetic field <laughs> drops, and it's connected with the sun overall. Then you get the direct directional flow of the sun's light, don't you? Because it's all about frequency, isn't it? High frequency, get more of a narrow band. And that's what the sun's all about. Frequency, because all the frequencies come from this black Alan, hole. Alan, cover your ears. It's the only way to protect yourself. High frequency. Wait, wait a minute, Colin says, I feel a Monty Python quote coming on. He's making it up as he goes along. Thank you, Life of Brian. He's making it up as he goes along. <laughs> <laughs> hey Dan. These hey Dan. Lower frequencies. Oh, smaller wave bands at the beginning. So it's directional and it gets out through the atmosphere, different layers to create all the light and the who works on light and frequencies. So that's how you get your seasonal change in the magnetic field, the sun right out south. So it just changes the frequency. Wow. What? It's all about frequencies. You get the seasons. I can't even work out how to explain it. My brain, my brain won't absorb that. From in here. <laughs> the frequencies oh, change God. and then you get your directional shooting of the sun for your for days. No, not that's your days, your seasons. You're talking about Wait. seasons. <sighs> just keep playing, just keep uh, playing. How am I ever going to learn anything if I can't understand a word he's saying? Yeah, do you think that works on a Ooh. spinning ball? Well, Blue? There, there, there simply are not enough words in the English language to describe how badly I want to hit Lindsay in the face with a brick. There's some good ones in German, though. Now before he uh -huh. tells us before he tells us what that is, can we work it out ourselves? Because I've got no idea. I I, I have a feeling that um, if you unpack it all, that that's potentially some of the dials and crap on the Antikythera mechanism. That's what I was well, thinking. That's what I think it is. Mm. Yeah, be, be, because obviously. All we actually have with the Antikythera mechanism are those are, are the um, CT Big. scans, the 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 um, the, the X-ray computed tomography, uh, and a lump scans, of rusty a lump of rusty corroded metal, a lump of corroded copper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and from that, they've kind of built up what it should look like and I think that's a then 3D representation of what they think it should look like. Yeah and they Neither actually they, and they actually built they actually built the built it in a way where they actually could figure out what it what could do with all the seasons and and all that. So even the um predictions for the leap years or something for the um Olympics or Roman events or some something. Uh, or yeah, well, it, it does. It does. Um, it allows you to calculate four-year cycles for, as, as one of the things it will do. Um, yeah, and, and of course they're basing that all on the you know because they 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 don't necessarily see all of the number of teeth on a cog, but they have big enough sections of, of, of bits of it that they can work out the number of teeth it should have and um, you know if the, if if they then set the number of teeth within the window that um, it says to the to the correct value it all works if they set it to one of the other yeah, potential values um, because obviously it was all handmade. Then it wouldn't work. So you know, 
it's it's still quite a lot of guesswork on. Hmm. But yeah, well, that's what they did. They had to work out. Well, it it, it seemed to have done, done this for the celestial um, things. So yeah. But they but basically they assumed a lot of stuff. Yeah. Ah. It works on a flat Earth. It's all there. Check it out. Astrolabe. Um, oh, is it an astrolabe? <laughs> yeah, Ray says that's yeah. not the antithesis mechanism. No, I didn't think it was because I would have recognised that one. Okay, so maybe he doesn't True. know what it is. Mm. There's another one. <laughs> It's actually something the uh, plumber left behind the last time he had the drain cleaned out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's out of the camera. Um, what are we talking about? This, um, this is about um, why well, we went from 360 days to 365 days. Really? You see the Egyptian tail there about Thoth gaining the five extra days for Newt, the sky goddess, to make, to have babies in those five holy days. That's not what my so understanding is why we've got different days. So it's all about, you've got, uh, you know, the equinox here, but, you know, you've got uh, at the end, period in down here. It's that uh, the five days is when everything's level. So at this spot here, when everything's level. Flat or level? <laughs> I thought they were the same. The sun's not doing anything. That's where you lose your five days. It's the springs on both sides. 2.5 September. You lose them? Where do they go? 2.5 March. The equinoxes. 2.5 days. And so it's a there, okay? So you get your 360, 180 each side, and then you get your five days in between. That's the story there. So I'll read you this <laughs> tale from the Egyptians, the Egyptians left us. Coming into the aid of Newt, the wisdom god Thoth devised a plan to outmaneuver Ray. Re, Ray, Ra, whatever. Thoth presented himself to the moon deity uh, Khonshu, who was a great lover of the game Senec, and he challenged him to a series of matches. The stakes, however, were quite unusual. Thoth proposed that if he won, his prize would be a measure of the moon's light, 172 to be exact. And that's the 52 minutes the moon is delayed every day. One. Konsu was so confident in his abilities that he accepted. However, much of his surprise, much to his surprise, Thoth thoroughly outplayed him in the whole series. In claiming his prize, Thoth took the light that he had won from the moon and gave it to Newt. So there's, there's more to it when it comes to the moon than what I've just said about the sun, the, the 360 to 365 days. Um, I did it way back, but I can look further into it if I could. So it um, sounds like he's reading that junk so that this uh, transfer caused Hachi the Earth orbit likes. to shift and increase. That he likes? That, that, that the patchwork dude that believes in the space Jews and all that likes, the spirit science dude. It sounds 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 like he's, he's reading from the same thing, because I don't, that doesn't sound like the actual Egyptian myth, uh, but I might be wrong on that. Increase its length. Now you've got to listen to this because people don't see this message. They don't read it the right way. They just read it literally, just like the Bible. So we'll go back here again. In claiming his prize, Thoth took the light that he had won from the moon and gave it to Newt. This transfer caused the Earth orbit to shift and increase in length from 360 days per year to some 365. This has been all interpreted in the original languages. Language. 
This transfer caused the Earth orbit to shift and increase in length. See, I'm not sure. He's if not giving us a source orbit. for where this comes right from. Right there, just reading it straight off. Whatever it is. This is what I explained. It's yeah. gone from equilibrium, equinox. Some printed out page. Earth orbit to shift just means go down to the southern. Increase its length, increase its length. So you've now flipped from aphelion to perihelion. Magnetic fields flipped to send its field out here. Then you get the directional sun. So this is the bigger field, isn't it? Increase its length. It's longer, look. <coughs> People just think I'm trying to interpret it in my way, but they don't, they just don't understand it. Nothing oh. about oh. Just read things literally without thinking. When someone comes along and tells them otherwise, they just think, oh yeah, that's just your inversion. That's just, just your version. You're just trying to make it fit the picture. So this transfer caused the Earth orbit to shift. So spinning ball is, yeah, they'd love that. They just think, you know, it's part of their spinning ball theory. Shift to increase its length from 360 days per year to some 65. So they're talking about that point there. And that's, that's the cause, the variance. It's always been like that. They, you know, some of these ancient, these videos on ancient knowledge and stuff, they start trying to tell you that, you know, just, just the world's changed. Something dramatic happened. Stop. Um. From what I understand, in some cultures, um, the months all had um, 30 days, which is 360, but they also had like five days in the year that were outside the months. So it, it depends on cultures that there's a lot of different ancient calendars out there obviously a lot of people are familiar with the aztec one which used several different counting methods um and doesn't really relate to like how, how we look at them now the celts had one that um every five years they tacked on like an extra month i think and i think theirs was a 30 or 28 days Every, every month. I, I forget off the top of my head. So kind of depends. I, d I don't know what the Chinese did, but they, they had a uh, fairly accurate um, one as well. Anyway, uh, Newt was thus able to give birth on the extra days as they were not part of the true Earth, i.e. the 360 cursed days of wrath. This is when Newt was allowed to give birth. And these were the five holy days. The 6th of September, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th. Yeah, 11th. That's sick. That's sick. You can't count five days. <laughs> and that's, that is in, oh. at the equinoxes. The, Lindsay, the what's two plus three? September, <laughs> is further in the north. Yeah. That's when she really gives the birth. Getting in, getting in there. Well, two plus the three minus one. Female as above, so, <laughs> so that's her story there. And uh, it was able to give birth on the extra days as they were not part of the true earth, i.e. three five, cursed days. See, cursed, they're not cursed. It's, see, this is, like, this is in religion. They make out the divine as bad because of the death a man's death on that time. But that's the death of him as that in the physical world, his physical understanding. He's born again. This is when you you find people born again start going to church out of the blue. What that, that's all about. So Newt was thus able to give birth on the extra days as they were not part of the true earth year. Five children were born. New gods to enter the world. These 
These aren't from outer space or anywhere. They're humans who have been awakened. Their third eye is opened. Hey, Punchy. You got your laryngitis all healed up now? They start using more of the right side of their brain. They know way more than the average do. Each god was born on one of the five extra days. And it's to do with the moon, because when I say September, it's because the moon goes further and north. And it has to be a full moon at that period. And that, that full moon, the magnetic force of a full moon, we all know what that does with tides and stuff, coinciding with... Um, lost my train of thought there. Yeah, 3 o'clock, 3.30 a.m. in the morning. That's... It's a divine time on earth. That's the most energetic time when it comes to magnetism on the earth. And then when you get the full moon in that same time period, bamo, it affects the human brain, the fluid in the brain. That's when you, the flood is created. The water is released from around the pineal gland, gland and the pineal gland is exposed. Just like the Noah story, the boat on the mountain there. That's what that's all about. Now, in addition to the changes that took place respecting the Earth, the loss of the moon's light was no less significant to the moon itself. As a celestial body, it was greatly weakened and became smaller in the sky. It's... Um, not waxing, what's the other one? The opposite side. Indeed... Prior to its loss, it was a bright body and a visible emitter of light, much like the sun. Following the change, however, it ceased to continuously shine and was forced to go into hiding to periodically recuperate. It could only shine for a time before... Time before. Meaning, they're basically telling it it was the magnetic force of the full moon. Uh, it only lasts so long. And this is in religion when they talk of a time. At a time. A time. And half a time. All religion does not know what that is. I know what it is. When it is. What it represents. Uh, only you, Lindsay. So, see all the celestial bodies get rejuvenated by the sun. The moon goes into the sun every month. But a special time is those five divine days when the, when the moon goes right and close because what happens is the sun, you know, it's the egg, cosmic egg, it's leveled up, leveled out. So it, it shrinks. Don't tell Riley you've got you know, a cosmic you know, egg. on the angle, right? When you come up level, it's... Imagine a vortex water on an angle, it's, it's going to elongate, come level, more circular. It brings the moon into the sun. There's those big tidal variants that you get in um, September spring. Um, here's something else. So we get tidal differences because the moon gets closer to the sun. Okay. Now, in addition to the changes that took place respecting the Earth, the loss of the moon's light was no less significant to the moon itself. As a celestial body, it was greatly weakened and became smaller in the sky. Indeed, prior to its loss, it was a bright body and a visible emitter of light, much like the sun. Following the change, however, it ceased to continuously shine and was forced to go into hiding to periodically recuperate. It could only shine for a time before going dark. And thus, the very phases of the moon, as we know them today, came into being. Yeah. Well, see, the moon, people go through awakenings uh, through various stages. And, and it depends on the, it's all to do with constellations and the stars and that. And it's the, um, the phase of the moon, sometimes. If it's, in their, if it's in their star sign, that sort of thing, the position of the moon. So, <clears throat> so you're getting different levels, but the ultimate level is the, the one all religions are talking about.
talking about this, the divine one, that in September, between 3 in the morning and 3.30, that was the Jesus story. Who's time? Uh, everybody's seen that's... this? Didn't quite get the China, the Asian guy. That's the, that's oh, the most God. obvious no, one, the Asian bring guy's that up. face, but he's over here, you can't see it. But what a joke, eh? Right in your face. I mean, sure, someone can run around finding pictures of other people that match, but no, no, it's it's there. It's in your face. They never died. Wait, no wait, one's put pause. The end of one. Yeah, I'm trying to work we, out we how he's correlating for... what he was talking about to the pictures of those people. Well, well, he, he straight up said anybody can go around and find just pictures of people who look like this. So, so he's admitting that, they, they, that, you know, it, it proves nothing. You can just find pictures that of people who kind of look like somebody else and be like, yeah, this guy is this other guy. And then he could find pictures that he thinks that look like something else too. So that's yeah. exactly the thing. Yeah. One of those skyrockets <laughs> to go into La La Land. <laughs> Skyrocket. You might have found a science book. Whoop, well, SE. Uh, it said La La Land again. Ah! <laughs> and the camera <laughs> and the And the memory card filled up. That's there it. We, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that happened. We knew it was going to happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We 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 timed we timed it perfect. Twenty seven minutes and thirteen seconds. Yep. Yeah. Is it just me or do any any does anybody else get the feeling that Lindsay may be one of those rare individuals that would actually benefit from substance abuse? Yeah. I think he would. <laughs> oh, yeah. I you know he would. You, you know that. That's 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 a that's a hard one, Blue, because because you know that that could swing in either direction. Either either he could get better or he could get way, way worse. worse. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I'm, I'm I'm thinking at this point that anything's worth a shot. Yeah, oh, that's I'm, true. I mean, or two or three, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I've stuck the pictures that um, Colon sent me of the astrolabe that we misidentified okay um, in uh fair suck in the discord server awesome uh, i was gonna say what's what's the old saying anything worth a shot is worth another yeah <coughs> yeah they're seeing it out there that picture mm -hmm. of that uh, mm -hmm. i can quite i can barely read it the moving parts of the astrolabe were adjusted at a specific time and then on the face of the instrument the map of the sky at that time appeared what is the utility uh, many astronomical problems could be solved with one astrolabe from from what time it is uh, as we wrote earlier until when the sun would Somebody could read that better. <laughs> I'd have to share it. Ah, uh, where are you there? I can't read it properly at the bottom. Is that any better for anyone? It's really blurry on my screen. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, it's tiny for me. Um. I oh, oh, I can read it because I've got the the moving parts of the asteroid were adjusted at a specific time and then on the face of the instrument the map of the sky at that time appeared what is the utility many astronomical problems could be solved with one asteroid from what time is it as we wrote earlier until when the sun would rise or set with the asteroid one could also orientate oneself for muslim scholars this instrument was valuable because they could calculate the direction in which the holy, set of, holy city Mecca is located and pray. So. Yeah, that's a different device, what, what he thinks it is. Okay. Um, get rid of that. 
Okay, who else is on the list? Get rid of that. Oh, we've got a, we had a couple of people out in the chat, but we haven't got any way of showing their contribution to the award. Ah, get rid of that. What else have we got? There's no, I don't know if it's any point in really watching. Maybe. maybe. Who was who was on the list? Oh, go back to the list again. That's that's a list. It's not the list. Um. Anthony Riley went a bit downhill with some of the topics that he started to come out with later on in the year, or so he's he went down a different road. Everyone knows what our one's like, it's never changed, it's always the same. Yeah, he's cool. <laughs> um, Brian Mabbitt, we, I, only, I only have experience with him over on um, the gem server is it, that I've seen him on. Or Jose, was it Jose's or gems? Um, I hear birds. You hear a little Harvard student. <laughs> oh, those little Harvard students. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Do you think we should give them a, a quiz? See what they've learnt? Yeah. I've never heard a duck squeak. I've heard them yeah. squawk, but not squeak. It's this one's got a bit of a problem with his legs. He's got splayed legs, so he's got a band-aid holding his legs together at the moment. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. He's, he's, well, he's not only doing got too to, well. He's only got to be healthy for what three months? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he graduates. Yeah. Okay. Has anyone else got a video of a for somebody we can put in for the? Award video on YouTube. Colin's put something up. Oh, that's for something else, is it? Yeah, oh, okay, think. that's something else, Colin. Okay, I was just checking me DM. Um, has Del Del come out of his shed lately? Ooh. <laughs> no, I can only hope not. Okay. Uh, Chris Berry, uh, Pete Shea, who else have we got? I haven't heard of Mel for a while. Oh, you said us, Mel. No, no, Mel. Oh. Mel. Oh, Salas, Sal uh, Smeller. That's, um, I can cannot think of his proper name all the the, the, the hot water heater bloke. Daniel Pratt. Yeah, Daniel Pratt. Uh, yeah. did did, he now the question is, does he have a water heater? Or does he, he have he did hot. he did bring out a video recently. I've I've seen seen it somewhere or did we play it? Did we play the, it or the, where did I see it? Oh thanks David. You, you, I need all the subs I can get by the end of the year which will be our Thursday evening. I don't think I'm going to make it, but I'm optimistic that I can get at least another 20 subs. So that's that'd be good if I could. Yeah, no, uh, Terry, I'm not sure if you saw the meme that went around just before Christmas, but just to clarify. The, the one just that just clarifies water heater or hot water heater. Mm. You, you know, <laughs> you've not seen that one. Well, where'd you put that? I'll stick it in. Oh. Yeah, I was just going through the list. There's another person that's um that I'd put into, into the um category is Demok. 
Anyone know who Demok is from Gems? <laughs> nah, not a name. Blue, no Blue knows him. Yeah, I know Demok. Yeah, I'd, I'd put him in the, in the category. He's definitely oh, yeah. a con he's definitely a contender. Um, who else have we got? Hmm. There's a few others, but they're all from uh, Discord servers, so you don't really get to see anything they've got for YouTube. Oh, am I missing out on one of the Harvard students? Where are they? There they are. I, mean, I'm, I can make that. I know I can make Aww. it. I know I can change <laughs> that. Uh, where are we? That one. There we go. These guys. So that's Larry Curley and Mo. Yeah. Nathan, Nathan, and Nathan. <laughs> Nathan, Nathan, and Nathan, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Two of them are looking in one direction and one's looking the other way. So does that mean that he doesn't know which way to look? <laughs> That that duck yeah, these, are the, what about? <laughs> these are the three out. These are the healthy ones. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to jump out. <laughs> uh, trying to organize a jailbreak here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, they're all trying to. They're, they're all planning their escape. Yeah. <laughs> He's saying, if you just bend down a bit, I'll jump on your back and I can hop over. He's looking at you. You looking at me? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Ah! <laughs> 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 you got out. <laughs> One, one's out and the other one's two out. are going, hey, edge me. Yeah, now, go, now go on the keyboard and type something like, say, help, help. <laughs> oh, the keyboard's tasty. Oh, not the keyboard, the monitor was. Oh, not the keyboard's tasty yeah. too. <laughs> I don't think they'd be heavy enough to push the keys down, would they? I don't know. I don't think so. You know, I don't think they'll have enough weight. <laughs> Oh, density, uh, or um, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> uh, the, 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 um, the, the, the gravity force with the equal and opposite ground force is, um, is not sufficient to press the key. Is that what you're saying, Terry? What colour? The, these ducks are all white ducks, aren't they? Yeah, they'll 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 um, end up with white feathers. He's looking at his mate. On the <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's awesome. me. Hey, what am I doing on TV? Hey, there's more of them. Yeah. There's three more there. There's six of us. Yeah. Yeah, they do gang up. Oh, okay. <laughs> So one's smart enough to hop out, the other two hadn't quite figured it out. No, not yet. He doesn't want to escape because he wants to hang around with his mates still. Mm. <laughs> the other one wants to if be all different. Three, yeah, if all three of them end up getting out. Mm -hmm. What would happen? Yeah. <laughs> now, what, now what will happen? Will they group back up? <laughs> yeah, they go everywhere together. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're doing that, I'll go over. Yeah, you get the next vid ready. Yeah, I'm looking for a video. I've been waiting for anyone to give me suggestions of a person that's dropped anything. I've only got, I've only who uh, I've got in the show your shit because I don't subscribe. <laughs> and there was me thinking that um, 
Paul better be careful because he might get some unwanted fall out of his keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I can, I can find you something completely random you can pick on if you want. Yeah, I'm just going through. Oh, that guy. Mr. Sensible did that guy. Remember that guy, Blue? Which guy? That guy. Oh, that guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Sadly, that guy. Has anyone seen that guy come back or not? Not lately. Uh, but then I, I, I noticed today that um, all of Nathan Thompson's uh, stuff is gone from his YouTube channel. Well, uh, Nathan Thompson's YouTube channel got deleted. Oh, that that's worth discussing, but we can't watch. Uh, well, there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a YouTube channel out there that would seem to be Nathan Thompson. <laughs> I think it's, it's Irish Demon. I, I think Irish Demon created one for okay. it because he was okay. on uh, Team Skeptics uh, live stream the other night. Not, not like in the, he was in the chat. Uh, mm. And he super chatted, and it was Australian money. So we think it's Irish demon. Yeah. Uh, okay, because because I saw a, I, I saw it was there with with, with his Bible quotes thing at the top, and, um, and and the link to his web page, which is also not there. Mm. I haven't got Suspended. a flat earther per se, but Simon Dan did a video. Flat earther tries to debunk Brian Cox. How long does that go for? Merry Christmas, everyone. That doesn't go too bad. We might we see if this person can be in the contender. I'll just grab it. I won't play it just yet. Just mute it. Pause it. Okay, so somebody tries to debunk that. Uh, who else? Flat Earth Bigfoot, Flat Earth Everett Anderson, got somebody that thinks there's a... That. <laughs> uh, Is it Wacker Duck? Where? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a Plucker Duck back in the, back in the day. It was a TV, sh TV, TV morning, sh evening show. It used to be a morning show, but they changed it to the evening. Oh, I had Ozzy Oz Oz Ostrich. Yep. And no, um, the one with the hat, with the stick. What was his name? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Dickie Knee. Dickie Knee, that's it, yeah. Yeah, but my favourite was um. So I just. My favourite was the little puppet that used to annoy uh, Mary, um, whatever it is, what her name was, um, morning show. Um, shit, now I can't think of his name. <laughs> it was a cartoon show of a morning and. name will come to me eventually. Agro. Agro, that's it. Agro, yeah, Agro. And Marie and Marie or someone. Oh, I had the biggest mind blank. Yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, Marie yeah. Bigger. Yeah, that's it. it Jeez, <laughs> Agro used to give her heaps. <laughs> yeah, Google, oh, yeah. Google, Google Agro Loved it. on um, YouTube, guys, and watch watch that. That's that's funny. So many innuendos and things yeah, the that... The TV show was called... Uh, but let, they let him get away yeah, with a lot, it, that's it, for it sure. It wasn't cute. It, it was... When, when you're an adult... <laughs> yeah. When you're an adult, you pick up all the jokes. Right. Yes, you, yes they so are. It was called Agro's Cartoon Connection. I remember it all now. Yeah. Um, what else have we got? 
Um, mm -hmm. I just threw a video in any other vid. Uh, mm -hmm. Have fun with this bloke if you want. Okay. Where are we? Uh, when the lights go out, China's said to be eyeing surprise EMP attack. How long does it go for? Uh, three minutes. This is, is Dabu 7. If there's been one. Okay, there's no music or anything, so I'll grab him. Okay, that's three. I mean, that's two, sorry. So we've got Simon Dan and that guy. I'm still looking. For anyone else. Has anyone noticed anyone else putting any suggestions out in the peanut gallery yet? No. Yeah, well, we can't do Nathan if we haven't got a, a, a recent Nathan. Um, has anyone put any homework lately, or that's to do with... Oh, the Arctic I, I think it's been a, a fairly uh, light uh, flirt week because mm, of the holidays. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Okay, there's nothing in there. Go back to there. Uh, yeah, we've got the vaccines and bloody corona shit that's bloody swamped too many streams. Yeah. Just hard to find. A flat earth, uh, we've got Everett Anderson, um, a flat earther explains atoms. Yeah, I'll grab Ooh, that, that should be fun. Okay, I'll grab, I'll grab that one. So we'll see who this guy is. Alright, so we've got three. That's three. Uh... <coughs> Uh, Team Skeptics one's got um, Christmas live stream. Nathan Thompson loses his channel, but that's that's just <laughs> whatever happened on that. I can't. Um, I think it's only like the last thirty minutes. Is is Colin uh, check your DMs? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, Colin. I I don't see things all the time. Okay. Oh, you can uh, have this. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Colin. Yep. Th Thanks, Colin. Oh. Oh. Sorry, oh, Terry. Yeah, I'm just grabbing Colin's suggestion. Yeah, seems okay. seems like most of the chat is trying to name the uh, the ducks. <laughs> um, Brainary has has some some. Oh, ones, that's a good, I... yeah, that's a good idea, Peanuts. You just can rip, rap, and roll. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Density, Brainary, buoyancy, and gravity. Swedish. Yeah. Huey, Dewey, and Louie, of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Zeblon, do you get to vote? <laughs> yes, you are all contributing to the um, to the final voting. Um, if you have a nominee, put put it put it out there. If you want want us to put someone down as a nominee that we haven't got yet. Okay, that's that. Back to there. I've gone hyperactive. <laughs> hey, I missed that one. You've gone hyperactive. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see him. I've got me Discord thing in the window and I can't see what's oh going God. on. I have to wait till. Oh, wait a minute. I can cheat. I can put it over onto YouTube. They're there running everywhere. They're ducking under the monitor and launching themselves off the edge of the desk. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing a delayed reaction over on YouTube then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brandon Toya. Brandon Toy. Okay, so Brand I I've heard of Brandon Toy. Has he got... Oh. Has he got a channel? Can somebody Google 
to see he, if he's got a he, YouTube. He's, he's <coughs> taking over Ranty's channel. He was oh, yeah. so, oh, yeah. so that would be just the live streams, won't it? Well, yeah, we could... but 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 he did he did a a debate with uh, conspiracy cats on the agree to disagree. Oh, it was so painful. How recent so? wasn't it? Uh, that was Thursday, last Thursday, I think. Can, okay. okay. I'll I'll drop a link to it. Give me yeah, a yeah. Put it in any other vids, and I'll pinch it pinch it out of there. Did he rage quit, or was that somebody else? And like and Nathan. And... No, he didn't rage quit. They they actually had a um, reasonably civil de debate. Um, you know, it, minimal yelling and and that kind of stuff. So so yeah. it wasn't. Um, it was but, it was civil, but it was civil, but he didn't answer anything. Right, but maximum <laughs> stupidity. Right, like like yeah okay. yeah. <laughs> Did you say this was like Thursday? Or so yeah, I think it was out. it was not this past Thursday, Thursday right. but but the following Thursday or the ah. previous Thursday rather. Okay. Um, oh, okay, that'll do. Well, I've got something yeah. that's got it's got Nathan in it, so we'll, I'll grab that. So we've got. Oh, I'm really glad the uh, ducks can't see the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. roast fry and saute. <laughs> Oh, John. <laughs> oh. Uh, do you have Gar Gary Y on the list? He has a couple of... Oh. It can... Oh, Gary has videos. Really? Well, post them over in um, what? any other vids. Oh, Migs, if you got a thing, which one you want to pick? Gary, I didn't know you made videos. Do, do you have one that, that tells uh, us what... What two plus two or two plus three is? Because because that'd be a really nice video for you. Mm. Yeah, well, I think we've got one, two, three, four, five. We'll see if we can if we can get that one. That'll be six T to have that for nominees. Uh, cats versus toys. I haven't watched that one. I gave you. I'll keep it before stupid. Uh, is that Brandon Toy you're talking about, Elmix? Was fun as heck. Brandon presented trying. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, mix, mix posted the one I was looking for. Thanks. Yeah, well, Elmix, Elmix has got a video that's with cats versus toys. Is that... Yeah, that's the one I was I was thinking yeah. of. Okay. Yeah, don't put him in um, Fair Suck because I'll only delete him, but I'll let you, I'll let you off for now, but... Um, ben I get, Blake I get, I, get I get confused when they go over in first suck. Is that the one? Uh, agree to disagree. Predictions. Globe versus flat. Who's, who's yeah, in yeah. That, who's in that one? Brandon Toy versus Cats. Okay, so that's that one. And you've. And you've bookmarked I can see the one it. below it. He's going to prove himself wrong. And you've bookmarked it at a t time stamp. Is that what you want us to play from, Elmi? It's uh, yeah. one fifty ish on that one. And you got to go, Gary. Why? Why bother? Okay. <laughs> Sorry if I pronounce pronounce your name wrong, Gary. It's just my eyes can't. See properly. Uh, Steve, I, I don't know if he proves himself yeah, I'm wrong. I, I, I mean, that would be saying that he proves anything mm -hmm. and Two, not just three, talks word salad. Five, ah, ah. Shit, we've got seven, we got seven nominees point, so point. far. We're getting, we're getting it. I, I picked that on random, but that's only three minutes. Sorry. Ah, oh, hmm. he just picked. Just. Does SE oh. have any videos? I mean, he's in the chat. We... Yeah. I don't know. SE, have you got any videos? I'd have to, <coughs> yeah, I'd have to type his channel in. SE, SE Montreal YouTube. See if, see if he's got a video. Because we'll, we'll put Gar we'll put um we'll put SE in there. Um, Elmig said he just picked. That one at random that I've that's been posted. So, I think uh, uh, 
I would posted that so that I would be able to find it because I was asking about it, wasn't I? Yeah, you, you, and you and me were talking about that one. So I think he just found it for us. Mm. Yeah, but why the sunset's changing saying. little in angular size is just one at random. Yes, unless, it's unless, kind of uh, unless, unless Gary's, it's Gary's, it's Gary's thing. Unless Gary's got one he would prefer that we looked at. Hmm. You got any particular choice, think... Gary, of, of a video that you'd rather see? I don't think he's timed out at the moment, so he should be able to answer. No, no one's timed him out yet. Oh, I timed him out earlier. Oh, he was you... copying and pasting. Oh, yeah, copy and pasting. No. Yeah, we've we had one. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's a no, no, Gary. Yeah, well, I'm looking. I can't go and look on his channel to see if you can find something else better or whatever. Tough. What did I say? I've got one, two, three, four. We are six, doing really seven. well just with duck videos. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> 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 I, I, the ducks you, are great. Can can you get some paint and paint one black? <laughs> <laughs> Make it a black swan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's safe paint. You can paint say, a duck. Want red and blue, uh, grey part style. You could get some food oh, dye. Oh, did, did Gary leave? Where, that's, where, that's where? He, he's gone. Oh. Well, is Essie still here? Essie, oh. do you have a video you'd like us to play for you? I don't know if Essie has videos, but he's the one who discovered the skate tard paradox or something. Oh, prob probably the skateboard paradox. That's, that's, you know, if the earth is round, you should be able to ride a skateboard south without pushing it because you'd be going down or some Jesus, yeah, it'd have, some, to, be very some flat, like it'd that. have <laughs> to be a very flat surface where would you get a flat it's surface also not that how long? gravity works mm. yeah and where would you get flat, a flat surface that's that level and flat to do something in that context well well they they think gravity sits at the south pole so mm. like <laughs> Well, you've got the north-south highway in um, America that runs from up the east, the uh, west, top of the west coast down through to South America. So if you started with your skateboard up there, you, you'll end up in South America. Yeah, there, there's there's continual road systems almost from the tip of Chile to um, Alaska to, mm, to somewhere. That's the one in I was Alaska, thinking. Yeah, that's that's called. Um, yeah. It's got a name. I can't think of it. <laughs> it it's the Great um, Transatlantic, I think. Yeah, that sounds, no. familiar. It sounds familiar. No, 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 not Transatlantic. What what is it? Oh God. Trans something. But, but it's it's not yeah. not technically one road. It's a system of roads, um, but they're all interconnected. Yeah. Sorry, Steve. No, in any other. Just things. just quickly, I want to say what happened. <laughs> to drink the craving soda. I'll stop, Raybody. Um, El Mix, there's, robots, a, there's Steve, a channel called Any Other Vids, which is what this is, it's Any Other Vid. Fair sucks just for text and memes and shit. Um, the ducks are disappearing from the bottom. Where, where, where? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what somebody put in the chat. Uh, <laughs> No, they've found the edge of the flat earth. They keep oh, falling oh, off. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Colin said, already dropped you something by SE. Did I? If they talked, two of them would have gone. Oh. Uh, SE, John Rapp SE. said, can we watch Gary's, his angular compression and Riley criteria affects uh, one of his ships is quite DK. What was Colin's one? Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, I got that one. Where did I put that? Okay. Yeah, I got um, the SE one. Where did I put it? Yeah. SE, SE. But, 
as as for that road yeah, system, sure it's that. not quite perfect. I think it's in Colombia. There's unfinished. There there's no road or whatever because of some debacle or whatever. So there's like a I think it's a one mile or a five mile stretch where there's there's no road and there's been plans to build that road for like twenty years and it's just never been done. I um, believe it's called the Darien Gap. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Which I think somebody had already posted in the side chat. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, yep, I see it. Uh, Larry. Well, I've got enough videos here to play through for for, for nominees, I think. Mike of 71 said, did they pull one over Nathan Thompson? <laughs> did they? Yeah, the, the, to do with the um, duck suit thing. The, these, these ducks haven't yet. They're, they're, they're not graduates of, yet. No, no, they haven't graduated yet. They're, they're still learning. They've been indoctrinated. Guess, uh, preschool ducks. Yeah, preschool ducks. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say, I'm, I guess, I, I'm, I'm guessing they're in the uh, bachelor's degree ducks. <laughs> David, can do do you have Terry's uh, Discord? Can you post the link to that? Because you said you found a video on Gravity Road, which I don't I don't know what that is. Yeah, I see some naked people out in the peanut gallery. If you're a sub, you, you can get your spanner. So say say you subbed, and then I'll. I'll give you the spanner. Um, ah. Indoctrinated. Yeah. The, yeah. Indoctrinated. <laughs> yeah. 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 The ducks, the ducks are being indoctrinated. That's it. They seem to uh, like the keyboard for some reason. They want to send an email or something, do they? Or they want to phone a friend <laughs> or... <laughs> or they might start up their own YouTube channel. Oh, that'd be perfect. Oh, I bet that'd get more views. Yeah, set up a YouTube channel for the for the ducks. It's only subscribers they get. <laughs> I guarantee you you'd have people super chatting you by the end of the week. So juice guys sub so I can give you your spanner. Who was it? There was two naked people. It was Larry and um Mike, Mike seventy one. Yeah, Mike yeah. seventy one and uh, there's a Larry DeMarch. Yep. Duck programming. Mike, have you subbed? Oh. Did I have to sub to get my spanner? I didn't realise. Well if you got a spanner <laughs> Oh, don't worry, I subbed. Just, just, just type in the peanut gallery then. I'll check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not near the keyboard. Oh. <laughs> uh, RT says if they keep walking over that uh, keyboard, they're going to finish uh, Riley's thesis. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll do the. Remember, we used to do the voting for videos a while back. That was fun. That was before my days. That was before your days. Yep, oh, that's right. Yeah, you you don't remember that. That's where the four came from. Yep. Oh, you subbed it ages ago, Larry. Oh. oh, did you? Oh, you must have been. You must have lost your spanner back in the culling when I did the. Back in, whenever that was. Yeah, I culled all the spanners, so that means you get your spanner back, obviously. And you're Mike seventy one says he's sub. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, but are you an old sub or a new sub before the culling? Because a lot of people <laughs> were before that I remember for before. Not everyone it, I can he, remember, he's... but anyway. Yeah, uh, I've one, seen him two, around, three, so he three, might have been four, an old one. Five, six. So John Raps says the name should be Shift Alt and Delete. Shit, now I've got to remember uh, how I used to do this <laughs> for the voting. Um, vote. <laughs> I, 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 I would oh. say uh, Control Alt to Z. <laughs> uh, delete One, instead. Two. Who? Where? What? Who's doing control? Oh, the the, the darks Ooh. control. 
The ducks. Oh, the ducks. Control, shift, alt, shift, alt, and delete. Yeah. When did I say seven? One, two, three, four, five, seven, seven. Now, now, let's see if anyone remembers what happens now. You'll see what happens. Uh, the, You're gonna see being what... a bit naughty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, right. I want to Should name them IV, DV, and controlled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, see how many people remember. Ah, 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 ah. They fell for it. So, R96, you're timed out. And Jinxu, you're timed out. you got to wait for them now. <laughs> there we go. See, they're out. All right, now we go. Now we, now we get the real voting. <laughs> oh, the, it's, we're all going to get timed out if you do that. Oh god, this is great. Yeah, that, the surf's timed out. Uh, who else? Who else fell for it? And shady. Yeah, what about me, mate? I don't know yet. Think? I'm still looking. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, have we got any other Can votes? Only time you out in chat. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, we got a six and a five. The entire chat's going to be tied down. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mute donkey. You're out. You're gone. <laughs> uh, I've only got uh, five Lexi's and six. going to be muting me in here. i got five and six and one. No, I did now, John. I've got that. That's up there. And two. <laughs> Milk hey, no, got the right what? answer. Steve's got two. One, five, and six. So we haven't got... Oh, we've got two... Gee, this is hard to keep track of the numbers. We only need three of the same number. So six, five, one, two, and three. Oh, Surf put his... Surf put his soccer cane in. <laughs> Yeah. Lemming for well, you didn't put the actual number first, so trying to cheat on that one. <laughs> so I've got two, three, one, five, and six. Oh shit, don't you? <laughs> Does anyone know what maths <laughs> that is? Oh, two times nine, 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 nine. Oh, oh, um, what? Hmm. Point nine. Repeating. It's it's a magical number. Uh, don't look like we're going to get a get a vote. We're not getting a serious vote. Six I, five. I think, I think uh, two and three. Yeah, have, I've got six five. Yeah, six five one, two three. Three point three three. Does that count as three? No, that doesn't. Hey, I would that's three point three. It rounds down to three. Okay. Well, well yeah, I, I can't give you my six three video. Any other real votes coming in? Two. I thought Milkman Dan already voted once. Which vote do you want me to pick, Dan? You can't vote twice. Well, that's a real vote, so this, we won't class the we won't class the three point nine as a vote. We'll class the three two. Oh shit! Now he's put three in. Forty two. Yes, Dark Steve. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to just go for the first v number because I'm not getting yet three consecutive numbers by the look. Oh, three. Okay, it looks like it's going to be three because even though Dan put three there. Okay, we'll go for three. Oh, they pooped on the keyboard. Oh, and the one's eating it. 
Oh, yuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, and I, I, I've right. typed out, so I'm just going to tell Rem uh, Renee yeah. me. Yeah, uh, yeah I've, I've, I've been on a gravity hill. But they're not the funnest thing, but they are really interesting. So, oh, shit. <laughs> when I say that, that means, that means no. Okay, so three. It's that one. Sorry, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, but I'm going to have to yep. turn, turn you off, off of over them. on my end. No, they can stay there. They're just not going to get shown out here. No, because I'm going to I'm going to clean clean that stuff <laughs> off the keyboard. <laughs> going to have to put the keyboard in the dishwasher. Okay. Don't, don't want that to dry on me. <laughs> All right. Mm. Righto. Uh, press play, press play. Oh, this one only goes for four minutes. So, who's this? What'd you pick? Everest Anderson, Flat Earth that explains atoms. I don't think you're showing the outside. Oh, sorry. Now you are. Let me know when it comes through so I can pl press play. Swear, Joe, who swore? Jinx, you said somebody swore. I, did, I missed that. I didn't hear a swear. No, Paul said they pooped on the keyboard. No. You can say shit. That's okay, not, it's, that's it's not on the list. It, that's not on the list. What's that, mate? Press play. Oh, yeah, that's what I was waiting for. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Terry, you did, Terry said the yes word. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, calls for today a brief video to speak about uh, the atoms and how the all matter is formed by the ether. Uh, in fact, uh, we have introduced uh, this new idea, new for our uh, physics of uh, the 21st century. There's another Nobel Prize here. Oh no! We have seen, for example, that uh, the ether moves over the earth uh, with a vortex and uh, this generates a non-uniform distribution of the eterons uh, over the Earth and this means that the gravity force is a wind of ether, a vertical wind of ether. Wait, wait, stop, stop, hold on, okay. I'm a little bit confused here. And for the matter, the atoms, it is something very similar. It is a non-uniform distribution of eterons. We have more eterons in the nucleus uh, less eterons, but however, we have a, a, a certain quantity of eterons also uh, in the external part of the atom where the electrons move, and the electrons are a vortex of ether. This is where science doesn't understand oh, no. why electron or other things they call it <coughs> just disappear oh. and then. How did, how did this, how did Everett get hold of later on reappear over here? But the electron is. For us, that well, next time I speak to Everett, I'm going to have a word with the him. The electron is only a wave moving in particles, where particles <laughs> are the eterons forming the ether. Hold on. I don't Hold know which is worse. The fuck up, right? I don't know which is worse, Lindsay's interpretation or this guy's. I, I'm going to go with this guy because he's he's actually following the dumb things Lindsay says and trying to build on them. Yeah, yeah. It's just double not making sense. Right now. <laughs> Matter is a wave new moving in the ether. Only the difference is the uh, different quantity of uh, eterons in uh, an atom. Uh, so when an atom loses these eterons, we lose these. Ex but is he saying etons or atoms? Yeah, so uh, I I think he's saying etherons, like like there there are ether particles that are inside of atoms. I, that's that's what it sounds like to me. I don't know. I was gonna ask if anybody did uh, any uh, you know uh, atomic uh, theory science here well, and, and, well, and could tell me how Paul, many Paul's etons were were in a, a resident, um, atom. 
Pull, pulls out resident one. <laughs> Paul, can you explain what this guy is saying? <laughs> quantity of uh, eterons in uh, an atom. Uh, so when an atom loses these eterons, we lose this external vortex. Have you been smoking peyote for six straight days? And couldn't some of this maybe be in your mind? And uh, uh, the internal part, condensated part of eterons, becomes... Uh, you paused it. Part of veterans becomes. A, I don't think that that's what he said. I don't think that's helping. Terry, you might be muted. Um, I might have been muted. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's awfully fine. quiet. <laughs> yeah, when it is, that's when I'm muted. I'm talking to myself again, and then one's ignoring me. That's okay. I'll get used to it. Uh, uh, miserable from the external, uh, from the exterior, and uh, we have uh, a miserable, Did, miserable, measurable. I'd say that's measurable. I'm going to have to pause it every time he says words for the, for the translator to work it out what he's saying. Positive yawn in this case. Positive yawn. Um, may, maybe yaw? I, I don't, I don't know. Positive yawn? I, I think I'm beat, I think, yeah, I think I'm beat on that word, what that, what he was trying to say for that word. I can't follow what he's trying to describe, <laughs> so I can't <laughs> figure out a word that would make sense to put in there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's the problem right. with word salad, it's you yeah. didn't put any word and it still doesn't work. <laughs> It's the coolest fucking story I've ever heard in my entire life. That's I'm insane. Not really uh, can I hear it again? Okay, when we have two metallic plates, two electrodes electrified, we have uh, that the end. So two electric plates that are electrified. Okay. How could you have two? That'd be like a oh. that'd be a toaster. You like you'd have the like you've got the wires running through and they're like they're electrified. Oh, the the peanuts say it's ion for for yawn. Oh, they're guessing I, ion. I, they're guessing that, are they? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I, don't I guess mind. that works. <laughs> <Try it. laughs> yawn. Oh, yeah, okay. Empty space in the middle is uh, full of ether. Great story compelling and rich obviously and uh, this ether uh, uh, feels the stress of the electrification of that space so i am going to pause it there what are you talking about and uh, it disposes in a not uniform so the ether feels the pressure or way with Maybe. an adensation uh, a more quantity of aterons around the cathode, and so this manifest with a wind of ether in the direction of the anode. Well, Alan, Alan should be picking up on some of this crap. Because nature seeks to uh, have, have the equilibrium. Uh, While we have uh, uh, an electrification, we have a not equilibrated uh, situation. Uh, and we are able, this way, to explain uh, all this experiment and the nature of the matter, the nature of reality in which we live with an uh, ether. Right. And all <laughs> is, all becomes simpler. Do I fully understand it? No! <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> 
Oh, well, that was worse. <laughs> that was worse. Than, worse than Lindsay. That was. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm. I'm definitely. Uh. I. I taking back. Uh. What I said earlier about about Lindsay and. Uh, this. This guy. This guy beats him. Um. I'm also. Uh. Apparently, there's an ether wind that's pushing down on us. Um, I picked that up at some point. Yeah, I guess but that I, comes I was trying from to work Lindsay. out what the two electri electrified plates with the ether that's feeling the pressure. I stopped paying attention by that point. I'm going to be honest. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't last. He kept talking about the aetherons, and I was like, "What the hell is an aetheron?" Okay, I'll have to. I'll leave him there. There we go. Okay. Oh, so we're up to six now. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Keep an eye on the chat because they're going to fall for it. <laughs> you say fall for it like they don't do it on purpose. There we go. And then I've got to put that. In as well. Ready. I usually wait for a couple of seconds. <laughs> oh, Elmig's good. Elmig's, <laughs> you bugger. You, on my end, you got timed out. Because you typed in five just before I put now. Okay, two, five. Two, three, six. Chat goes too quick for me sometimes to catch it. Uh, two. So we've got two twos. Oh, we've got three twos. That's it. Yep, there we go. I've got to type quicker sometimes. What are the choices? No, it's a blind choice, Mike. <laughs> it's it's all it's always been a blind choice. There's no favoritism. It's not big or anything. Surf. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and Mike. Jeez. Jeez. Oh. I'll catch you on in a minute. All right. <laughs> so what was it? Number two, wasn't it? I should have said two wins. Sorry. Yeah, two wins. All right. Was it two or what was you, it three? What do you got in that coffee, Terry? Uh, yeah, two. Yeah, I should have said two. Yeah, that's right. I used to write two wins. Yeah. Stop baiting. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to remember back in the day where, how it worked. Yeah, that's it. You don't know your own rules. Uh, well, yeah, I know. Well, it's been a while since I did it. <laughs> Sir that says wasn't that wasn't his vote. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think he was trying to answer how many choices there are, but he oh. was still wrong on that because there's not eight choices. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. You're catching on, Steve, how the how it works, the voting? Yep, sure I am. Well, it, it's, it's coming back to me a little bit, but I just remembered I forgot to put the two wins. Stop voting now, two wins. That's That should have been written in the one sentence. Right. Um, Zebulon. Jeez. I'm never going to get to play these videos if I have to keep timing people out all the time. Alright. So that was number two. Oh, oh get out of there, you. What are you Someone doing? Someone take the whiskey away from Terry. Whiskey? I haven't got any whiskey. I've got coffee. I was going to say, it's probably Bailey's. Real D. <laughs> In the coffee. Yeah, but read yeah, real, read real, read real D, you guys. Okay, so we'll go to that. Oh, I prefer to have that. Sorry. Ah, shit. How do you get back to there? There we go. Ah. Uh, what am I missing? I'm, miss I'm definitely missing something here. Oh, no, there it is. It's ready to go. 
death. Don't you know what used to... This, this goes back to my original... Where the four come from. R regular and original viewers should, have, should know this. <laughs> I, I just realised that this now, I think, um, becomes hilarious with our other channel that uh, we have, that Mute helps us out with. Well, was that end bit of your sentence, Steve? I missed it. I said, I think this becomes funny now, considering the name of our other channel. Why, what's the name of your other channel? No, you know the <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, you have got no, you're not seeing this, are you? It's in here. Sorry. There we go. So, what's this one? D A H B seventy seven. When the lights go out, China is said to be eyeing surprise EMD MP tack on US selection. Uh, blame Surf for this, uh, not Surf, mm. um... This guy comes up... Me. Yeah, it was me. Oh, this, uh, was this guy comes up with a lot of stupid... Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> By death. <laughs> By death. <laughs> now it's in context, so you wrote, wrote it in a sentence, see. That's, that's... You have to work out how to bend the rules, death. Right, here we go. I think we've got it all going. This is Dabu7. If there's been one key event that I've warned about for years and years and years, it is a lights out situation. It's something I talk about often and for good reason. We have seen proof that this would be the one thing that could bring down the entire country, every business, the economy, the banking, everything under the sun, you name it. This coupled with cybersecurity attacks could wipe everything out. And what we're seeing now for the first time in some time is a report talking about this. This group is the EMP Task Force on Homeland and National Security. Now, the last EMP group that they had together put out a warning stating that North Korea and their satellites to go over our country could be EMPs. They dis disbanded them and took away the funding shortly after that and then now here we have this group of the EMP task force on homeland security saying the same thing saying that it's not North Korea though they're looking at they're looking at China although I'm here to tell you that North Korea would be the perfect patsy to pull this off for China they are Great saying pause. that they believe in this new report that oh, it's stolen technology video, but please pause. that China would strike first in an event of an EMP strike. They would not go for a tit for tat type of war. They are under a no first strike policy right now, but they say that they're not set up. Their defensive measures are not set up. They could not counter as quickly. They could not respond. That's why they say them striking first would be the move. And in my opinion, thinking how some top leadership would think and they would not want their country to get nuked or hit, they would pull this off through North Korea. I just feel it. I've always felt it. And who knows, they could even hit maybe North Korea with a nuke or a mini nuke afterwards for the history books. But they're trying to say a surprise attack and the lights going out is going to come from China. Whether it's pulled off through North Korea or not, I'm here to tell you the two shining star satellites that North Korea have going over every country every day are still there. And they were warned to have EMPs on board of them before they dismantled the last group. So I wonder today, will this information go in and ear and out the other or will someone actually start to implement a survival plan for a lights out situation once again you can never say someone didn't come along and tell you over and over again it's been dapu7 catch me on d live peace all right all right um uh
two things. Yes, EMP threats are real. Um, to nu- uh, North Korea uh, hitting the U.S. is a joke. <laughs> we we've seen their missile launches. It's it's a joke. Uh, so uh, no, when they say the threat's China, they say it's China for a reason. Um, I've I don't know about. why he would think it's North Korea when when they have trouble hitting islands off their coast. But oh. I, I, okay, so that that's just a little intro to that bloke. Uh, yeah. He he has a lot of stupid uh, with a lot of other videos. Right. I was going to say that that one actually isn't as bad as some of them though because that is a legit threat, you know, EMP pulses. Um I mean we all we have to worry about them from the sun uh because you know solar flares. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so uh back when uh sorry to bring this one up, but 9/11 happened. Uh he was saying it was satellite devices as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't think he's going to get my vote in the high category. No, I, I, the guy, the guy who went before him, definitely uh, has, was was further along, and Lindsay is definitely further along, hmm. uh, <laughs> higher voted than him. So we're all trying to measure. Oh, well, I can't give stu- you any good material. Are we all measuring the stupidity against Lindsay then? Are we for the voting? <laughs> that's the, that's what it seems like. Trying to get somebody Same above, above to measure against. Or trying to get somebody yeah, above. Yeah, you know how. Sorry, you know how they measure, measure the heat. You know how they measure the heat of chilies on the Scoville scale. You know, and yeah, like an ordinary capsicum's like like five or something like that, and a um a a, a, a Carolina Reaper's like um uh, six million. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Lindsay is like pure, unadulterated, raw. Do, um, drongo <laughs> that's that, that's as strong as you can get <laughs> yeah yeah oh i forgot something mike 71 they wouldn't be able to hit alaska which is actually closer to them um and and they're they're more apt to hit try and attack south korea they just know better at the moment Three, three, two, three. Oh, three, one. Uh, a new hope. That's my vote. There we go. Now, anyone that votes after I say stop voting, just try me. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, one, two, three. Okay, that's the third one. Oh, look what you voted for. Did people vote after I said stop voting? Do I have to time you out? Just don't look at the chat. I, uh, I I would give Dan a pass. That that that, that might have was just close. been. Yeah, uh, that just yeah, that just pushed it. Yeah, that, okay. But what about Mike seventy one? That's the no, third. That, was, that was a bit after. Yeah, that was a bit after. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Bye. <laughs> everyone everyone else is safe. Oh my god. Dan, everyone Dan, else Dan's is like, safe. No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> you have to plead your case. Before, when you realise that you voted after the thing, if you plead your case and you can defend yourself. Okay, we've got that one. So I've already played that. So we've still got that one, that one. So we're up to the third one. Here we go. <laughs> I like Don Giovanni. What, what do you do? A holy hand grenade reference. Uh, oh, okay. And here we go. If I got that, no, oh, I've got to sh- share it across there. So you the guys have got it. Sound. 
and press play. I retracted my vote, Your Honour. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, you just swung in on that one, Dan. I'll, I'll let you off, but somebody else miss, just missed out. Adam L, do you do remember the stream delay? What, in the chat? No, the chat's not delayed like like about three, two or three people after my, when I write something, because they can, they can write something just before I do, and it might come out just before me on on their side but it's only usually the odd one or two either way it's it's never three or four okay and that's in the chat not in, not the live stream compared to the to us okay for north korea jinx huh? oh, sorry she's talking to you. yeah interesting Wikipedia Hello. says it only. Yeah. Okay, ready for play? Yeah. I think I've got everything. Oh. Oh, video unavailable. <laughs> oh. oh no. Thompson's bed. Oh no, I think. Gosh, I'm a ghost. These are metal balls. I'm going to juggle them. Better not let Blue see him do that. Give me that vitamin D. Hydrogen, <laughs> helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Are you personal? All right, guys, I'm getting like a lot of messages. Uh, we didn't block anyone from the official Flat Earth and Globe discussion. We got 140,000 members in there learning the truth. The group was just deleted a few minutes ago. So what? I'm getting all kinds of... <laughs> but wait, what's the pause for? Was I muted again? Wasn't there a Probably. thing that he was um, saying about the Facebook group that it's not, nothing to do with him? But yet he's going we. Oh, I, that that might have been a different well, Facebook. Group. Yeah, that was that was his Facebook group, wasn't it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. the 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 one that he's talking about here is is the one that he ran, the first one that he ran that had all those people. He also had a ton of people blocked on it. So the fact that he goes, we didn't block anybody. Mm. Kinds of people messaging me saying. Why am I banned? Why am I banned? Nobody's banned. The group disappeared. So after four years, it was a good run, guys. I was last on the way here. I've been blocked. I was blocked when we went to Rally. I was blocked when we went to Denver. I was blocked when we went to Dallas. I couldn't live stream. I couldn't be in the group. And I was laughing on the way here. And I was like, man, I'm not blocked. I can live stream. And the group disappeared. So funny how that works out. I just wanted to let you guys know that's what happened. So thanks, Nathan. See you, Nathan. Fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicone. What does it say right there, guys? Silicone. Twelve o'clock. Camera ready in Malibu. Twelve did to he three put, p.m. Did he put silicon in the um, periodic table? Evidence for a round Earth. That never happened. So from day Wait. one, the first hour Pause. of filming. What 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 never happened? I'm sorry, I missed what he said. Never happened. Something about his schedule with Ben, I guess. I think you're muted again, Terry. If you're no, talking. no, I'm still here. Oh, okay, okay. It was just quiet, so I I, I wasn't sure. Okay, yeah, I, I guess let, no, I let, nobody I else. You talk, try to decipher what. I thought it was running from the Flat Earth um, Facebook thing into this. Yeah, this. It, it, it's going over like all the stuff that, that uh, bad stuff that happened to Nathan this year. And this is something about Reckless it Ben. But but I couldn't, I, did, I missed what he was saying never happened. Hmm. 
down to earth. Oh, them debating the globe. Okay. Thanks, Tanner. That never happened. So from day one, the first hour of filming, everything I was planning on happening didn't happen. I don't... Either they lied to me or they didn't. And either way, it's funny as hell, in my opinion. They, they have nothing. They have nothing. The Globers have nothing. They're so boring and redundant. So either people figured out it's flat, which happens all the time, or they lied to me, which happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like this, why people quit flat earth, dude. You know? No, oh, but hey. Mm -hmm. Phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, calcium, scanadium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. Nathan Thompson's YouTube channel is nowhere to be seen. I still can't catch it. Oh, that kills it. I'm done. I'm done. So no one's heard from him since then, Ethan. I, I think he's on Instagram is what people were saying. That's that's the only place where he really hasn't been blocked because he's, he's blocked on Facebook. He's blocked on YouTube. Mm. Well, he's usually... I, he, he was going over to Jim's server there sometimes. I noticed he was popping in there a few times. I mean, he's probably been been uh, made fun of by so many of the flat earthers after the uh, reckless Ben and the Nathan thing that that uh, you know he's he he doesn't have any of his friends anymore. Okay, so I'll put him I'll move him down. Beer's not vegan, John Rap. What? What animal products are in it? Um. Also, I don't. I don't see what juggling metal balls and reciting the periodic table of mm. elements has anything to do with uh, understanding the shape of the Earth. <laughs> he thinks it's brain training. Somehow, it's r repetitive. The repetitive thing with the balls bouncing is brain training. I'm, I mean, if if he actually was learning those elements and you know their atomic number and you know useful information about them, maybe. But he doesn't even have that. So, brainery's onto some. Well, he's learning the elements in order. Yeah. Yeah. If he gets, he gets he's them in order. Learning, learning the elements in order, but no usefulness yeah. to it. All he's got to do is learn how to count, and then he'll know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. That's that's very true, Blue. Uh, yeah, brain area. Yeah, meat meat is not vegan. Uh, but beer, I don't. I I think beer is is. Uh, uh, there's no animal byproducts in it. I think the problem with a lot of them is they use gelatin in the filtering process. Oh, okay. If that's true, then then yeah, that that would count. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm not you, vegan. You, I don't care. But uh Yeah, exactly. I mean, I couldn't even be I couldn't even be vegetarian because who the hell could give up bacon? Yeah, or steak. Um, oh, yeah. I, I literally had a steak hamburger for lunch. It was beautiful. Do do vegans count bacteria as animals? I mean, I guess they're not um well they're a living organism so you think they'd care yeah but they're they're not they're not part of the 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 same kingdom or whatever so so i mean it, it would be fair if they didn't you care right mm. right i think it's not like uh, they're going into uh your, your local grocery store and cremating uh a packet of yeast yeah Dead said, how come I'm allowed to say that number? I didn't say it. I typed it. <laughs> Four wins. <laughs> winner, winner. Four. 
Yep. I only see, oh, th I only no. see, th I only see three of them there. No, there's... there's... Oh, how many do you need? Three. Well, yeah, three. There's, there's three fours in a row. Yeah, well, I can see Tanner's first one is three. Then Elmig's one. Jinx you two. You, you, have, you, have, you have Death says four. I said a new hope and David said four. We're talking in code now, are we? <laughs> well, you, you, yeah. Well, yeah. Seth, Time Seth put me a out when I said the number. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll play, we'll play four then. Okay, four wins. Oh yeah, but, Surf put a clock at four o'clock. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Where's the clock? I do the clock thing, but I don't have to find that. Yeah, you have to. You have to look at it. Uh, Is that in the thing down there? It's yeah. It's in the emojis. Is it? Oh, I know I use emojis for some things, but I never. There's a clock somewhere. It's buried in there somewhere. Food, travel. Beasts of fungus. Oh, yeah. travel. Here we go. Travel. Four, four, where's four? Is that four? There you go. <laughs> I'm not looking at the chat while I'm typing, you know. Um, well, okay, well, we, we have a unicorn ref. Where? Where? What? So, there's a comment Death. saying, I'm nominating myself, myself to, to be union rep, rep of the but I'm going to call him Unicorn. <laughs> mm. There's there's no pommies here willing to do it, they say. Did he say to stop voting yet, Love Hat Lad? Yeah, I just typed it then to, to skydiver. Yeah, I, yeah I, under the heart icon in Windows. Windows? Windows? I'm not using Windows, I'm in the pop-out gallery thing. Okay. Uh, so that's that one, that one, and that, that one. <laughs> okay, Tanner self-nominated himself to be the unicorn. Okay. But that's not peanut related. I, you gotta, it's got to be I was peanut gonna say, related. I, I don't. I don't think he he uh, volunteered himself. I think he just said that he was a unicorn. <laughs> hmm. Now I haven't got. <laughs> now I haven't got the best one of his, but this is an example of this person's. Uh, do that. Now I've got no idea mm. here, so. John, you need faster kangaroos. This is a little sketch I made to try to show why this is there any sound? Does not. It's very quiet. Mm, I don't think process. you're showing the outside. Compared to yeah, yeah, it's shown outside. Oh, okay. It was just uh, the delay then. I used a nickel. I traced around a nickel to make my circles. The line underneath the circle is the width of the diameter of the nickel. The line represents a, a cloud. The nickel obviously represents a sun. They're both touching at the same point of elevation. Now, I, of course, believe that the sun moves parallel over the earth, which is why I drew it like this. I also believe the clouds move parallel. Now you can see I drew tangent lines to the edges of the circles. And then I also drew lines to the outer edges of the line. Now you can see the one on the left. It's close to the same. But the tangent line to the circle is actually slightly less. Is he... I'll have to clarify the rocks. From the from the point down the bottom left, 
towards the circles he's got up the top. Is that meant to be the sun from down the bottom onto the earth or the other way around? I have no idea. I think that's meant to be the angle you see the sun at in the sky. Yeah. Because I heard him saying something about parallel lines, something. Then he said clouds yeah. or something. He also seems to he also seems to believe that the um, sun and clouds are at the same height. Mm. And the width of the line. Then, of course, as the sun moves across the sky. So, what's the width of the line's got to do with it? Mm -hmm. You can see my angle has changed. Instead of looking straight up, it's now more of a. I don't know what degree, but anyhow, it would, the line, if you draw a line to the edges of the lines, it's now less than the tangent lines to the edges of the circle. Now we get to the third one. Now it's considerably less. So the angle to the bottom of a cloud will be, become more and more narrow, which causes it to look compressed which makes it smaller. But what goes... Is he talking about corpuscular rays? No, he's just talking crap. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, Alan, you're great. Uh, I, th I think that's the polite way. Uh, I don't know if it's the polite way of putting it, but it's definitely the correct way of putting there, it. There's no sense to this. 100%. Like, he can draw a circle and he can draw lines. I'll give him that. That's, wait, that's wait here. I think I can sum up this video. I drew a circle and then I drew some lines to a point. And this this shows that the sun and the clouds are um, a thing. And they do a thing that uh, is done. And that's why the sun isn't really setting. Did, did I do it right? Mm, I don't know if he brought the sunset into it yet. I've only heard about clouds and sun. He was saying something about the sun getting smaller and, 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 and that it, is par it travels parallel across the, the sky. So I, I figured that, that he was getting there. We're pretty close to the same. Oh, well, at least he's learned how to use a ruler. And my lines aren't exactly the most accurate. the circle seems to be staying approximately the same size. Now, as you can see, the, the angles... The problem the is wait, the wait. angle between the two, between the, the angle between the two tangent lines will be getting smaller as you move from the one on the left to the one on the right. Yeah, yeah. There's obviously, there's not enough movement across that piece of paper for it to be immediately and noticeably obvious yeah well the the other the other thing is he, he just said that the sun is the and and that's supposed to be the circle or whatever is is the same size in all three of my drawings yes you traced a nickel that nickel didn't change size <laughs> 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 Yeah, and doesn't he realise that um, uh, the sphere is one of the only shapes that looks the same in cross-sectional area, no matter what angle you look at it from? Mm -hmm. Whereas a two-dimensional line, of course, doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The apparent area of the two-dimensional surface will change as you look at it from a different angle, but a sphere won't. <laughs> no, Adam, it's been proven that even in Minecraft, it's it's a round world. But so, <laughs> so why is the sun a sphere, and why is the moon a sphere? They're luminaries that hang out in the firmament because reasons. But, but, mm. but we special. But, but but the wandering but the wandering luminaries are not spheres, apart from 
apart from being a stupid, you can show me as having faces like me. No, 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 Alan. O o only Sauron has the one ring. <laughs> <laughs> No, so um, doesn't have the one ring. That's why we're not all enslaved to him. <laughs> oh, may may maybe the flirts are trying to give Sauron back the one ring. Maybe that's that's what it is. I did refer to them as wandering luminaries on a step, just because. Um, but you know. But you can see that Venus obviously has to be a sphere because it has space, it doesn't fit, just like the moon does. Well, I, we, we can see all of the planets rotating. Like, like we, we can literally watch Jupiter rotate. We can watch yeah. Saturn rotate. We can yeah. watch any of these planets. Hell, and it, in fact, if you, if, if, you live, if you live close enough to one of the poles, um, Jupiter, uh, yeah, at, at the right time of year, Jupiter will rotate in less than one night, in, in less yeah. time than, than, than one night time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this this is how we know that Venus spins the wrong direction and that uh, Uranus spins on its side. You know, like. Yeah, yeah but I mean, I don't even have a telescope. And I can photograph Venus well enough to show that it has phases. Yes. Press play. Oh, press Good. play. Sorry, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> the ground level, which is why we see the sun angling down towards. We see the sun angling down. What does that even mean? I mean, I, I uh, like that you couldn't even make it two seconds. I know I that, that yeah, has no I meaning. Jesus, that has no meaning to it. The, the saying the sun is angling down. What does that actually mean? <laughs> it looks down and smiles at you, <laughs> Steve. Didn't you know? <laughs> that's that's I'm why Australia is so hot right now. I'm st I'm, st I'm yeah, still so stuck on, on the title of this thing. For God's sake. Here yeah, is the sun sets knob change. socket. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're crying out loud. The sun doesn't change angular size at all. Not a little. Not any. You dipshit. <laughs> and, um, this definitely... <laughs> oh. Ah. Blue. Let us be specific. The sun does not change... does not appreciably change in angular size in a single day. Because over a period of year, of course, it does change. Yeah, from, one, from winter to summer, yes, it changes, yes. Yeah. I realize Just that. a little bit. But in the course of a day, it would be really tough to see any change, even with the best of equipment. Indeed. simply a matter of the angles from our eyes to things we observe. It's perspective. So here, perspective makes the sun appear to be going uh. towards the horizon, and perspective makes the sun look like it stays approximately the same size. It has to do with the shape. Oh. Gary obviously doesn't understand what the word perspective means, does he? Yeah. <laughs> Was that somebody on the video oh, right at the end yelling? No, I think that was it. It's Steve. No. Oh, was that Steve, was it? No, no that wasn't me. Oh, it wasn't? Yeah, Maybe yeah. It was. right at, yeah, right at the very no, end, somebody me. yells. You listen. <laughs> I press play. Oh, I have to go back further. And that was right at the end. Perspective makes the sun look like it stays approximately the same size. It has to do with the shape. It's a ball.
Uh, it was somebody in the, on the panel then, because I thought it was on the video. Mm. Okay, that's, yeah. that's what I thought. Wait, did he say it's a ball? Yes, he did. He said the same as a ball. Hmm. And I'm sorry, but perspective doesn't make things look bigger as they go further away. <laughs> that's not the way it works, Gary. <laughs> and the shape of something doesn't affect how perspective affects it either. It's a shame he's not in the peanut gallery to explain himself. Yeah. Poor Gary. All that brain damage. <laughs> and the brain damage. And the brain Part damage. 71 <laughs> says, the first time you saw the pills is like. Yeah. I mean, if you would have measured the actual angular size of those three spheres in that diagram, he would have seen that... Um, the, the one on the right was significantly less in angular size than the one on straight above him. Um, uh, it, it would have varied by much more than what the actual sun varies in angular size throughout the day anyway. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and yes, we admit that there are some refractive effects right down on the horizon. Oh, beyond the infinite plane brings it up to that same argument. Gary is really good at making word salad. That's 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 what Gary does. Yeah, with or without the mayo, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Which. We should put on some like uh, Italian sauce or something, you know, give it a little zest. Surf, that number wasn't in the count this time. Can't, yeah, I was going to say, guys, you can't have that number. We already used it. Yes. And I think the number already comes up at one. Uh, there we go. Five is right out. Oh, oh, did it? Oh shit! I thought I seen it I three times. I think two one. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, I think I was premature. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So it's one one two two. One one two two. Is that supposed to be Six. two, Mike? Do we count? Do we count the emojis as a number? Uh, we might have yeah. to. Yeah. Terry, I think you're going to have to do something about Zebulon. Why? It just doesn't get it. It just doesn't get it, yeah. There, there, there's three twos. David, the... Meg, and me all put two in a row. Hmm. Yeah, but, but Donkey, we're not supposed to vote in the peanut. Oh, we're not supposed to vote? Oh, yeah, oh, you, okay. d yeah you're not allowed to vote. Did you, Donkey, <laughs> vote? Oh, I shit. did. I didn't oh, know. Well, well there you <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah, he did. There you Take go. that yeah. back. That, yeah. It's okay, I fixed it. Yeah, I mean, if you really, yep. really want to have a boat, at least get a sock out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one that I don't uh, know about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nobody knows about my socks. Okay, so we've got two, one, one, two, two, three, two, or oh, two. I'd say two wins then. If mm. if they didn't vote twice, that's what you got to check. Because some people try to cheat by voting twice. Mike, yeah, two. Oh no, Mike voted two, so that's. And Sir puts a soccer county. <laughs> Sir yeah, is yeah. voting against himself. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think two wins because I got I got Mike seventy one with the fingers. So that's one, and then two there. So 
That's one, two. Well, we won't get those until next week, next. Two. Yeah, so. okay. It looks like we'll have to make two wins. It's as close as we're going to get. These peanuts are all over the place. You you don't do the the uh, voting enough. They they've forgotten how it works. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I used to do it. I don't know how I did it every <laughs> stream or not. John says, "Don't use your crusty socks." <laughs> What about the males votes? <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna and what do they call them? The college votes or whatever they were, university vote thing. Gotta wait till they come come in. Talking about uh, the American Electoral College. Yeah, yeah, the way they yeah that's that stuff I I never could figure out. But anyway, I demand a recount. Uh, sorry, all votes are final. <laughs> okay, who'd we get? Just picked what? Two, two. So it's not that one. Oh, it's that one. Oh, it only goes for 54 seconds anyway. I thought it was going to be longer. I mean, you could probably back it up a little. Oh, no, it's that one. Okay. Yeah, it's that one. Yeah, that one's short. Yeah, it's that one. Oh, it's already showing out there. I forgot to change it. Four the cat's swordsmen. one keeps popping up, so I thought it was something different. Are we allowed to give these four swordsmen a spanner? That because that's a sock account. That's that's careful. like a group that's... account. I I don't know if I trust yeah. them. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Because that's not an individual. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's an entity like a. Yeah, that's not an individual yeah, person. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I know the American government likes to say companies are people, but but I I don't I don't believe in that. Hmm. I don't know what Australia uh, votes towards that. One and a quarter of a spanner each. A quarter of a spanner. <laughs> so, so the account the account gets a quarter of a spanner. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> and what's blue frowning about out there? What happened? Unhappy about something. Okay. This one's from SC Montreal. Moon down under versus Canada. So, SC's, oh. SC's not a flat earther. Why is he saying down under in the same context as we can say anyone that lives on the Northern Hemisphere down under? Because which way's up? Well, surely aren't we up over? If yeah, but which way? Under, yeah, but there's no up. up. There's no up. Up. There's no universal up, yeah. Yeah. Sir, I wouldn't ask that question in this stream. <laughs> <laughs> Not unless you want to be timed out again. Yeah, I know. It's a bit weird that book you sat to start for that. Yeah, okay. Especially oh, I got timed out. <laughs> Who did? Especially, especially considering the author of Australia. Not donkey. I see. Is a flat. Uh, I was going to yeah. say W stood for spanner. That's that's what. Yeah, it stood that's what for. I couldn't work out <laughs> yeah. how they got that for that letter. It's just weird. They have to yeah. reprint that book. I can't understand it because the, the guy who wrote it is an Australian. Well, I think we're going to have to email him or um, write a letter to him. Uh, Maybe we should invite him on the show. <laughs> yeah. Please explain. Please press play. Huh? What do I hear? Lee. Hey. Oh. <laughs> I keep hearing somebody whisper it, and I don't know who it is. Good evening, everybody. I can't believe I'm making this video, but here it goes. Some. Um, 
I'm going to have to criticise it straight away. And you know what I'm going to say, aren't you? Can't you see? <laughs> uh, that it's in... Uh, portrait. Portrait mode. Not and, and that... It, yeah. And that he's like holding it and rock you back and forth in a chair. As well, yeah. yeah. They just do not know how to turn their phone around the right way for video. Some people have been saying for a long time, well, how does the moon look different in Australia looks upside down than North America? Yeah, how? Well, here we go. I took a picture of the moon a while back. Right. I stuck it on my ceiling. I'm trying not to laugh here. Right. So this is the view from North America, right? All right. So I'm just going to walk on the other side of the room. And turn around, turn around. Yeah, and look back at the moon. And what do you know? It's wow. upside down. There's the Australian yeah. moon. How did I uh, do that? Uh, Was that magic? Wow. Uh, like I said, uh, I can't believe I had to make this video, but here it is. And now there's a, and now there's a problem. Everybody. Yeah, wait a minute, Alan. We'll yeah. get it. <laughs> it's finished. It's finished now. It There's only went problem. for thirty seconds. It's Righto. not. It's not effing circular. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 will say, um, the idea, just that, um, you know, it, they, they do make a fair point. You, you can make the moon, um view the moon from a different direction on a flat earth, just like you could on a round earth. But we also notice a lot of other things that aren't uh, as easily explainable. Uh, like if, if you watch the moon in the sky, uh, I believe it's at the poles and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but like uh, when it's a crescent, you'll see it start in the sky. Like if you're in the North pole uh, with the two points pointing up I'm in the air this. and when it sets, the two points will be pointing down. Um, and so it flips as it moves through the sky, uh, depending on where you are. And like I said, I'm, I might be wrong on, on your positioning, but uh, it, it is something that you can find videos on. Yeah. Um, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was otherwise occupied. I didn't see that short video. How did you get the moon to look upside down? Just moved again? to the other side of the room. Turn around. He, stu he stuck a oh, picture love. of it on his ceiling. <laughs> the, yeah, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the funny thing was, you <laughs> noticed that he stayed almost underneath it at the, at the start, so that um, he minimised the dis you know the distortion yeah. from the fact that it's yeah. Um, yeah. But when he turned round, you'll notice he went past it too far, swung round, and it was incredibly oval. And you saw how he had to very quickly yeah. move back closer again to make it become looking much closer to red mm. yeah and if you would have used a spherical object with features on it mm -hmm. uh, you would have noticed that you're seeing a different side of it yeah well <laughs> and, and and yeah that's the other thing that that's that's what would happen mm. otherwise Or why don't we just take a picture of the actual moon in the northern hemisphere and a picture of the actual moon in the southern hemisphere and do it? Wouldn't that be yeah. more easier? Yeah, that would be that would be very easy. And then you could turn one of them upside down and yeah, compare like it. it, and you would see that they don't look the same. Yeah. Well, it, 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 and the other thing is. Uh... Like I said, you instead of just comparing like how the moon looks from like Europe or North America or the North Hemisphere and how it looks in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, you you can you can go to like the poles, uh, or or somewhere above the Arctic or below the Antarctic Circle where you can watch the moon's path through the sky for an entire day and you can see how it rotates over that day because you'll notice a difference in its how how it, how it's facing you obviously the same sides facing you the entire time but there we go the actual pictures hmm, funny that one seems to match the one I've taken i don't think they were taken on the same day though 
Yeah, I know. I, yeah. I haven't got one that's taken at the same time. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, it, it would also be uh, good to know the actual um, longitude and latitude of where they're taking on Australia and America, since both of those are quite large countries. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they, it seems to be about a 90 degree turn and not a 180. Yeah. Well, of course, the other thing you have to remember is that um, the time of the time of night matters because right. there is some there, there is some rotation over the. Yeah, yeah, and that's 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 what I was trying to describe. That, that with depends on your longitude. Does that doesn't that depend on your longitude? Like if you did it at the same longitude at the same time. Yeah, I. I I believe, and and like I said, I might I might be wrong on this, um, but if I remember correctly, at at the um, uh, equator, there is no flip of the moon, and it, once you get to the either pole, it flips ninety degrees from when it rises to when it sets. Mm. Alan Peter just did that and did a video of it. Scott Scott said ah, about cool. the moons. Uh, yeah, didn't you just have? A, yeah, I got a picture of. No, we did a star trial. Peter, Peter and I did the star, did the northern and southern star rotations hmm. around our um, celestial um, poles. I think we're down to the last two. That one and but, that one. Uh, yeah. Um, you 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 have to be careful with camera orientation as well with uh, with with photographing the moon. Yeah, that would make sense. I mean, but but like that's that's the difference is we can sit here and go, oh well, this would affect it, that would affect it, this other thing would be affected. They 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 snap a picture and go, why isn't it the thing that I said that it would be? Yeah, I mean, we're not saying it's not. It's we just say we're 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 bringing up things that we have to control for in making the photographs. Is Alpha A? Uh, yes. It is the Greek. So it's A, A and A. If Elmig's Dave and RT96. Okay. Okay, happy. Happy about what? Yeah, yeah but that's a that's a that's a sock account. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> John, well, well, you you would do the the opposite. So, like, if you guys are at yeah, that forty you can't degrees then. south, you'd go forty degrees north. Okay. And and I don't know where exactly Australia is. I just. Picture What's here? Where we are? Yeah, it's uh, down here. You, you, it's down you, here. It's actually, Australia doesn't go down nearly as far south as you think it does. No, it doesn't go as far uh, south as England. That's for sure. I think I, 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 I think you I think you're actually not even I think you struggle to get to forty degrees south anywhere I, in Australia. I, yeah, I, I, I was I was just picking something as a reference. I, I, I knew you guys weren't super low, but I couldn't couldn't remember where. Yeah. Um, well, so, I, 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 yeah. we're low. Us, us, North, us North, some of us Europeans are um, a lot higher than there we are. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm relatively south as far as Europe goes, and I'm because I'm only fifty two and a half degrees north. I think the bottom tip. All our Scandinavian friends are close to the 60. 
I think yeah. the bo bottom uh, yeah. tip, you, you might as well say the bottom tip of Tasmania doesn't even reach the same as, it, as where Alan is. Yeah, well, England sits a lot higher than America, though, mm. so. Yeah, well, of course, well, the whole of, the whole of New, New the, um, all, bar, all of the big cities in Canada are all south of England and all south of the UK. I don't think there's a major city in Canada that is as far north as anywhere in the UK. Uh, because we get away with it because we have that thing called the um, uh, Gulf Stream. So, so Tasmania is below uh, forty, or yeah, is <coughs> below forty degrees south, right? So it's or above, however you want to say that. Uh, it but it looks like looking at a, a quick mm. map, the main continent of of Australia sits a. About between fifteen degrees south and forty degrees south, or about like thirty-eight, probably. Okay, nine degrees eight minutes. Yeah, there you go. I was I wasn't doing perfectly, so I'm sure you could find somewhere in in North America that is within that that same uh, that latitude bad. range, just on on the opposite hemisphere. And Cape York Peninsula is about ten and a half degrees south. Yes, because because Australia is about as far north to south as it is the west, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm thirty-three, thirty-four. I'm a little bit lower than Sydney. So you, you'd probably have to go probably have to go southern Australia and then you could get like New Mexico or Texas or uh, something like that 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 fits within um, the United States if you want to use the United States or or uh, Hawaii sits really low so press play I'm at, uh, let's see, I'm at about 36 <laughs> what press play Blue people are whispering Blue again. Night. Am I? <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> <blood. laughs> but I don't. But I don't actually have to whisper anymore because I'm at home on my own now, so I can talk as loudly as I like. Yeah, we know that. I I, I can contest to that. Or go to sleep and snore. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. I heard an uh -oh. All right, go ahead and press play. Okay. So who's this? Flat Earther tries to debunk Brian Cox. Christmas, everyone. I do hope that Santa bought you everything that you wish for. <laughs> he certainly did for me because Level Earth Observer is trying to debunk Brian Cox. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday, special Christmas Day edition with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark oh. V and Attain, IP address, ads, any devices sorry, sorry, online, sorry, you should care, sorry, targeted advertising. And this is how you're off online sorry. targeted advertising, 4% off and an extra 4 and use my code, every single penny in mind, Level Earth Observer has taken it upon himself to try and debunk Brian Cox. What a Christmas present this is going to be. Brian Cox reveals why the Earth is round this morning, which is a terrible British breakfast TV programme. Highly recommend you don't watch it. You'll end up front kicking your TV into oblivion. Trust me, don't watch it. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking I might... Have this, pro problem sorry, here. But, <laughs> but this morning is not a breakfast TV program, you don. You drongo. 
it's a morning TV program. That's why it's called This Morning, not Good Morning. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, unless you want to destroy that TV, which isn't a bad idea, to be honest. Not watching it, though, would mean you'd fail to see all of the good, the actual good that this show does for people. Not cool, Elio. Not cool. But let's, let's have a look what Brian's got, what he's bringing to the table. Is he going to shut the flat earth down with some real science? Obviously, they're bringing out all the top guns. We saw the Globe Perth conference the other day when they brought in the big guns. Now we're getting the big guns up here on TV. Should we be worried? Let's have a look. conference. You should be petrified, buddy. Forces of nature. Well, I've been, I've been um, um, what he called it once before for this. Yeah, don't, don't. The sound and the video. Yeah, I, I, I would just not actually. Yeah. Just. It goes for a while. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm surprised. Um, yeah, how did Simon Dan get away with it? Well, it's probably the same over here, Alan. If I play Channel Seven or whatever little bits of clips of that, I don't get a strike. Oh, that that uh, it ITV or uh, ITV or strike is nearly as bad as the BBC will. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. He's played it on. He's so it's safe yeah, over there, but to... not us. I don't. He might just get lucky. Yeah. Mm. This one might be hard to do. We haven't got the bit. Yeah. I. I, I... Yeah, but where's the flat earth debunking it part? That's not there. It's it's spread out, so this guy's going to talk about a bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with the shape of the earth, and he's going to interject comments every couple seconds saying, but what does that have to do with the shape of the earth? And Oh, here we go. Then Simon Dan's going to talk about how he's not on there for that. He's on there advertising his new show. He's got something yeah. here. I can't, I can't get it right on the right spot. There. No, we can't. I can't do this because yeah, we're going to have I, that in the background all the time. Bugger. Yeah, I would be really careful, Terry, because, you know, you don't yeah. want three more months of streaming on me, do you? No. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. No. Oh, Damn, damn, damn. Yeah. Uh, that would have been good if we could have got the bits out of that. Unless we get... Well, we could... Go to his I channel. Got an idea. Huh? I got Huh? Yeah, we could just we could just each watch it, you know, on our, on our own machines and yell, pause the video occasionally and it'll be about the same. <laughs> <laughs> Peanuts that have no idea I'm what sorry, I, I never started it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, sorry about that. We'll still put it into the... So that was Flat Earth Observer? The... That was the Level Earth Observer. The level, yeah, level, you know. level Earth Observer. Yeah, Crane Guy. Oh, Crane Guy. The one that says something about the crane swinging for Coriolis or something. Oh, well, yeah, whatever. Something like that. Uh, Brandon Toy. Yeah, we... We'll be here all afternoon if we try to find any more videos, so we'll have to finish it off after this, these ones. Now this bit's just stopped at a certain spot for this one, the last one we've got here, on agree to disagree. Blow versus flat. So there's a person that came on to that. It's just near the end here. We've got it. Debunking so far. me. Do we have a new neutral arbiter? But the answer okay. is no. I'm not. Uh, this this is. Yeah, uh, you, you're going to have to go <laughs> earlier. This this is in the super chats area. Oh, is it? 
Yeah, well, somebody yeah. posted it and just left it there. Yeah. Has he been? I, I, was I he go... on it the whole time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just him. Um, so that's that's their openings. You can probably skip Cat's opening because it's flat earthers don't understand. Uh, maybe here. This might be the beginning of the actual debate. There's there's a bit there. I don't know what all that is there. Or empirical data, and instead chose to mm, undermine any potential arguments that I might have come up with with uh, a bunch of straw men. But I would like to say, just to start off with, that uh, calling yourself a flat earther, being a flat earther, is not an easy thing. Uh, if you're not good with ambiguity or uncertainty, then I would suggest that you just stick to the globe model. Uh, because you're not going to easily find answers in Google. And regardless of all the authorities that tell you that you live on a globe, you're going to find evidence that that is incorrect. And the biggest place you'll find evidence is firsthand throughout your whole life. So regardless of what I can find in a textbook, and I can hear from geologists, uh, geophysicists, astronomists, my entire life I've experienced the Earth as if it is flat, level, and motionless. So that's number one. So that's 40 yeah, plus right. years of empirical. Yeah, but technically, like they, what they say, yes, you don't feel the, the movement of the earth as in its rotation just by sitting in a chair in the lounge room. That's, that's where they're getting a bit, um, there's a word for it. Cool data that I've yeah, collected. But... Sorry. But we can still see that the earth is at, yeah, so yeah, yeah. See, seeing and flat, flat. yeah, yeah, seeing and feeling is where they, where he's trying to split the hairs. Let's say, I'm on a non-rotating, stationary, flat plane. So that's my starting point. I've chosen to dig into certain avenues of the globe, and try to find out for myself if it's true if we're on a globe or if we're on a flat plane. And the first one that I looked at, which is the most obvious, is airplanes. Uh, oh, I'm going to no. share my screen here. <laughs> oh, not the old airplanes. Uh, if you have, not the old airplanes. If you have ever spoken to a pilot and questioned them in depth, you will find very interesting... In depth. Things. Oh, I have to... Uh, in depth. Yeah, Franzen, you've in not depth. shared your screen yet, pal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One second here. Okay, cool. So, is there any pilots on the panel been spoken to in depth by a flat earther? I've spoken to Brandon Toy in depth about airplanes. Did, yeah, did you yeah. tell him that the world was flat? And he still doesn't get it. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and... No, I've told him. I've, I've told him like it is, for God's sakes. I mean, there is nothing about piloting an airplane. If you're sitting in an airplane flying the damn thing, you would not know. You would not be able to tell whether you're over a flat plane or a sphere. There's nothing about that operation that gives you any clue about the shape of the earth. Sorry. That's just the way it is. It's right. Yeah. And, yeah. and then they stopped listening to you and, and you yeah. probably tried to tell them about great circle routes or something and, they had already now, zoomed if out. Start, yeah, if, if you ever get in, yeah, once you get into trying to figure out how to navigate, then you get something, then you get another. <coughs> so just the flying, just the, just flying an airplane. No, yeah, the, the airplane doesn't know the shape of the thing underneath it. The airplane knows nothing about the shape of the earth. The airplane only knows about the body of air that it's flying in. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, like everything else, the forces that are being applied to it. Yeah. That's all. But 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 you but this is your thing radar and stuff like that and navigation aids. Yeah. So that's that press thing. play so blue can get mad. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll just share my entire screen here. Sorry about that. That's so Seth said to jump about an hour, but we'll let this bit play play into it because. Yeah, you're going to want to jump about about two minutes here because he can't figure out how to share screens and stuff. And so it, 
it's oh, going to be... A, well, that's part and parcel of a flat earther's um, lack, lack of technical skills. Clear, geez, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, so I'm least intelligent than everyone here on the panel, and look what I do. Yeah, so 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 you're you're gonna want to like just scan until okay. you see cats sharing it. I doubt that. Okay. okay. See. And uh, it is uh, a button. Yeah, I did do that. I think it might be a permission issue. So, sorry about that. I'm gonna kill this and see if I can very quickly. And if you called out the uh, you wanted. Yeah, it. Uh, the presentation. So it's just. Um, let me try one more time, and then uh, I guess. Uh, uh, oh, Are you on. able to screen share from? Because I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I can see what you're on one of these tabs, so I can always switch to that if 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 need be what you're saying and, and talking about. So if you've ever talked to a science guy or blue marble science, what they will tell huh? you is that there oh, is there essentially no huh? difference between flying over a rotating. I've heard that name. Spherical Earth and flying over a flat stationary plane. There is nothing from the time that they take off the ground to the time that they land, no matter where they're going to or from, that will tell the pilot that they are flying over a rotating sphere. In fact, the words, it's as if you are flying over a stationary plane, have been used and have come through their mouth or they have acknowledged that that is the case. So, um, what I've done if, is I've analyzed a certain flight, and I want to point out the problems that this uh, this brings up. Is if you go from Anchorage, Alaska, to oh, here, let me switch here. If you go from Anchorage, Alaska, to Mexico City, Mexico, there is a substantial increase in the uh, ground speed of the Earth. We'll just call it ground speed, okay? The rotational speed. No. So you're going from about, oh I think God. it's 80 degrees, uh, sorry, 60 degrees north to around 20 degrees uh, north. I'm trying to hear his uh, So if you look at this chart here, 60 degrees north, he thinks that. Ground, the rotational speed of the Earth in kilometers an hour is 825. So, so pause it real and quick. At, so, so what he's talking about is, is the linear velocity changes because obviously you're changing how you know the 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 section of of the sphere that that you're on so yes but we don't use linear velocity for a rotational object but whatever i'll let him go back to explaining things that, but yeah that, that's that's what he's trying to get yeah. into it's the linear velocity changes yeah and the coriolis force is is, is taken up or the coriolis bit is taken up very gradually over that long old flight, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's a very small change, the, or a very small force, and, and yeah, and, it, and it's spread out because you're constantly having that change happen to you. It's not like it, you, you start at one point and then it just hits you when you get to Mexico. <laughs> and he's using the what's-his-name map. Thing too, he couldn't do it on the Google um, Earth Pro on the Google Earth Pro map, where you can actually go from point A to point B and actually show. Well, and he drew a straight line. That's yeah, not the he, flight yeah, path. He, yeah, no, and he drew the straight line thing. Yeah. Sorry, I should be right. letting Blue Blue yell at this because yeah, he, yeah. he specifically <laughs> calls out Blue. <laughs> Sorry, Blue. Mm. Oh, that's okay. Keep, keep going. You're, <laughs> you're good. 600 kilometers an hour meaning that when you take off from the ground in anchorage alaska you are we'll just say that you are given that momentum um angular momentum from the place that you take off which is 825 kilometers per hour and you have to gain that angular momentum throughout the uh, trip to get up to 1575 to match the angular momentum yeah. of the ground in Mexico City. Now, the way that the globe model says that this happens is you are gifted that momentum from the atmosphere, which moves in perfect lockstep with the Earth along the way and are carried through by transfer of uh, energy from the essentially wind to the airplane to gain that 600 plus kilometers an hour as you fly through the air. 
There is no special uh, adjustments required by pilots uh, other than following a ground track. There's no throttling. They may turn, but it gets lost in any other changes that they would do for the wind. So this seems to me as if it's magic that you are magically gaining momentum <laughs> and breaking the law of physics as you fly south from Anchorage to Mexico City. Um, hmm. There is no evidence, can, empirical evidence, that can, you can be pause pointed it for a to, second? to say that this is happening. There are no huh? observations. Of pause, Terry. I, I got a question for Blue. Is is it magic, Blue, that, that, that it ha happens? <laughs> Oh, you're damn skippy. It's magic. And Whistle Dick here has figured it out. <laughs> oh, the secret is known. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're done for now, boys. <laughs> Brandon has caught on to it. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, had mean, to I, mean, I, mean, I mean, how does he cope with knowing that his car accelerates from zero to 100 in a much shorter time? Than it takes the airplane to do that. I mean, how does it do it? It must be magic. Oh yeah, it must be. <laughs> Has to be. You know, I've talked. To, I've talked to Brandon until uh, much longer than I should have on several yeah. occasions. Yeah. Till, till so, you were blue in the face. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. I started out <laughs> blue in the face, and then it just gets worse. But this, these guys just absolutely don't want to listen to it. No. They, they can't. Uh, they can't conceive. Uh, the idea of the uh, of the, the they have have no idea of the concept of of, of a, a a mass of a, a ball of gas that's spinning as if it's something different than a, a solid ball of rock that's spinning. What would be different about it? Yeah, I I, I mean I the only same velocity profiles would exist whether it's a ball of gas. Or a ball of rock, or a ball of rock covered by a ball of gas. Yeah, it's I, all the I, same. You're flying in that atmosphere. That's all the airplane knows. It yeah. only knows its speed in the atmosphere. It yeah, only and knows the alt yeah. altitude and if they, above the. Yeah, and if yeah. they truly understood the Coriolis force, they'd be able to calculate what the size of the Coriolis force is for that situation. And they'd realize, or maybe not, uh, they should realize how insignificant it actually is. <laughs> I've done those calculations for these for these guys. Yeah, I know you have. To try to explain it to them. And the force is, is insignificant. I mean, it I takes a, it, 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 it's a, a bank angle that, you know, maybe somebody like Wolfie flying fly the, the great big equipment that he deals with would have instrumentation that might be able to tell him a temper of the bank angle. I sure as hell have never flown anything that had any instrumentation in it to tell me that. And that's literally the type of direction you would be talking about. Tenth of a degree of bank angle. What the hell? Yeah. Well and and I was gonna say I Blue, I I, I think the stuff that you're talking about is just way too advanced for them, sadly. I, I mean honestly, I, I really think that most of these people, the ones who are honest in this and aren't, and aren't just trolls or, or trying to con people, are are people who struggle with grade school level education, like math and science and stuff like that. Um, because that's, if not, then then I don't understand where where the disconnect is because like maybe maybe if we were talking quantum uh, quantum mechanics and stuff like that like that you know the higher and stuff but you can literally sit and talk to them about basic math and or basic science experiments that grade schoolers do little kids do and they just have to deny it or come up with random explanations. And it's like, I'm sorry, seven-year-olds do this. Well, you know, sadly, it, it, it is true that uh, many of them are, are, well, a lot of them are just being contrarians about it. They're just being uh, deniers. But some of them truly, truly lack the, uh, the tools they need to be able to understand these things. 
Um, I'm not trying to be mean to them or anything, but I mean, uh, there, there's at least a, a some percentage of them that, that really are never going to be able to understand this, no matter what we tell them. We'll play a little bit more into here and then if, see if it jumps to a different topic. Sorry, Zebulon. <laughs> I was making coffee. I, was, I muted it and then unmuted because I went to say something and then I forgot that I was still unmuted. Other than... The obvious is right. Stick, just, Sorry. Him. Sorry, Alan? I was going to say, the obvious is right. Funny thing is, they don't grasp the basics, but somehow I always want to go talk about Einstein's equations and quantum mechanics. Hmm. Well, now that's SC Montreal up and down. Mm. Implying or uh, assuming that you are on a ball to say that this is taking place. This is wholly theoretical, which is what we t find time and time again as we look into the details of the ball earth model. Now, you brought up that uh, there's this huge conspiracy. It would have to be hundreds of years in the making. And I would say, yes, there has been hundreds of years of work centered around or started by some occultists back in the, say, 15, 1600s. Oh, is that all? Who thought that okay. since the sphere yeah, was okay. perfect. Okay. It's, it's only that far back. Right. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So, so, so Brandon Toy is, is, is not, again, as any flat earther who agrees with the um, conspiracy, Brandon Toy is now calling me a liar because I would have to be in on the conspiracy. Thank, thanks to the stuff I did during my military service. Oh, he's talking about something here. Uh, due to turbulence, we just don't feel it. However, if you want to talk about empirical go, go, go evidence, go back a little bit more. This is my way. He brings this up. Yeah, I was well, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. We where 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 he starts on this because because this this is actually yeah. But this funny. is Brandon's argument somewhere here. Uh, this this is cats asking. Okay, that should be good. This is cats asking uh, Brandon a question. And okay. Brandon, of course, not answering. Okay. Of circular motion and how you calculate um, what acceleration we should actually feel on the surface of the Earth. You know, I think he'd, he'd perhaps realise that what we see and what we feel is exactly what we'd expect to see and feel. But let's have a look at the maths surrounding um, his confusion around Coriolis. So, um, if we really have a look, you know, here's... No, no, Katz is just answering the, about that. No, no, he, he goes, he goes on. Does it, yeah, but yeah, I love just. Well, um, Coriolis he probably, effect. He probably asks us the question after all this. It's it's at this point where he has the calculator up. There's a, a fantastic website called the Omni Calculator, and you can calculate all sorts of uh, things on it, uh, including the acceleration due to Coriolis and the Coriolis force uh, for an object of a certain size moving at a certain latitude, etc. Uh, and in whatever hemisphere. And I've Googled the numbers here for a, a typical Boeing 747. Now, I've rounded some of the numbers. You can find them yourselves. You can use the calculator. You know I'm not being dishonest with these numbers. And we can look down at the bottom here, at the Coriolis force and the acceleration. And I want you to have a look at those numbers. I want you to have a look at how big those numbers are. Just burn those into your memory for a second. Because the Omni calculator will also do the same thing for uh, force due to drag, for example, for the, a plane moving through the wind. Um, and when we have a look at that, look at this drag force here, compared to the force that we will be expecting to perceive ourselves to feel due to Coriolis. Just look at the magnitude of difference that we have. And effectively, you know, Brandon might be saying, well, why don't, why don't pilots make conscious choices uh, to combat Coriolis as they're flying? Well, it's a very well-known fact that planes, uh, whether it be the pilot or whether... Yeah, I'd, I'd rather skip the conspiracy cat side of it. 
Okay. I know it's hard to find it when actually Brandon Toy comes into it. Chapter in this book about the Paris gun, you can see uh, the maths that they used to account for Coriolis so they could hit the target. And then it's uh, it's over to you, and I may not mute my mic this time. So, okay, uh, thank you. So, interestingly enough, the ballistics tables that you found out, um, I have researched that, and they do lack empirical evidence. Now, what they do is they assume the uh, equation of motion, so they already assume the ball model. They then fire rounds, see where they land and kind of back engineer the calculation. Uh, he was about to say what I was thinking what he was going to do. Calculation or uh, force that they attribute to Coriolis. But there are all these other forces that are involved. He's applying that, that they, they originally calculated the trajectory of these projectiles. Now, wasn't there a... Um, things that got fired prior to that when they realized at certain distances well we missed that why did we miss it because they had to figure out that that's what the problem was in the first place well yeah well and, and the other thing is is all these flat earthers go you know anytime you say like something or whatever and they're like they go oh well you're they assumed the bottom ball model mm. no we proved that like two, three thousand years ago, and we moved on. Yeah, we, we've we've gone back and we remeasure to to get a more accurate number from time to time, but we've moved on to other things. It's not every time do we do something do we have to go. Well, let's double check that the Earth is still round. <laughs> yeah, we better double check mm -hmm. that. <laughs> so there is never. An independent variable called Earth spin or Coriolis that is isolated in any of these activities. You've got the velocity, you've got the wind, you've got the humidity, you've got air pressure, you've got gravity, you've got the shape of the ballistic, the uh, temperature of the ballistic, and a whole bunch of other things to contend with. So, where in any of this is the uh, so deviation? It's complicated. Yes, we know that. <laughs> it's not easy to calculate. Yes, we know that. Yeah, that's what I was saying, Elmix. Back back in the day, they would, when they sh shot projectiles, that they had to figure out how to, to hit the target because of that. Due to any rotation of the Earth, isolated. The Paris gun is what I would call a uh, anecdotal evidence. So you've said I can go outside and I can see this and I can listen to people on the internet say that, oh yes, the, the, the spin of the earth is causing this, but you haven't provided me any experimental evidence to substantiate that. You've shown me a calculator that calculates the supposed uh, Coriolis effect on airplanes, but that falls well short of providing empirical evidence since it is based on the ball model and presupposes the model in the calculations. Again, the pilots make no substantial corrections while they are flying that they can attribute to Coriolis. They say again and again, it is as if we are flying over a stationary plane. So I think I'm going to take the first hand experience of pilots who actually fly over the earth as opposed to a calculator on the internet or an anecdote about a uh, gun used by the Nazis during World War II. I don't think uh, that can outweigh... Hang on, hang on. Brandon, get your history right. The Paris gun was World War I. One. No yeah. Nazis involved. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Uh, and don't, didn't the don't Germans you... use a big... Didn't the Germans use a big artillery piece during the um, Franco-Prussian War of 1870-odd as well to bombard Paris from a bit of a distance? I don't remember. 
Uh, before you ask that serious question, I was going to make a joke about the Nazis being around since the Egyptian times, along with the Masons. <laughs> ah, that, 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 that'd be it. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Um, well, he slightly misrepresents the what uh, what, I, what I've said and what uh, what Wolfie says and what Bob the Science Guy has said. He, he somewhat rep misrepresents that when he says it the way he says it. Mm. I don't say that it's as if we're flying over a stationary flat plane. Mm. I said you wouldn't be able to tell the difference flying the airplane you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a globe or a flat surface or any other shape because the airplane doesn't know anything about that shape. Mm. It only knows about the air it's flying in. First-hand experience of pilots. So again, how do you gain the 600 kilometers of momentum as you fly <laughs> north? He's bringing these questions well, up but for the wrong people, isn't he? Like, if you were there, Blue, yes. Yeah. And, and, and he's just displayed his ignorance there by stating 600 kilometres of momentum. I mean, he doesn't even know what momentum's measured exactly. in. He uses no. mo momentum and velocity interchangeably, and that's... Oh, okay. just doesn't mm. quite get it. Where does that come from? Is there a one-to-one -one exchange because of the friction of the air against the airplane that carries the plane along? And you may call it a minor, very minor correction that could be made over time, which is a trick we see again and again to minimize this effect. This is one of those things that you guys hand wave away. Huh? It's not a trick. I mean, he, he, just, he just gave the explanation and then dismissed it. He's, yeah. He, he yeah. said it's a very minor thing that would be um, affected over a long period of time, you know, like it's a very trivial that uh, we gain that momentum over a long period of time because so, it's only a small change. And then he said, but that's just a trick used. Uh, no, it's not a trick. That's the actual explanation. Uh, <laughs> I, I like how he accuses us of hand-waving it away. Yeah. When, when we present all the mathematics, yeah, we present all the... The numerical information yeah. to show that we're not hand waving it away. And he actually wants to hand wave it away. Well, that's literally what he just did. <laughs> yeah. Way and say, no, no, no. It's, it's very small. It's very minor. We don't even need to worry about it. It gets lost in the shuffle. Pilots don't need to pay attention to it. It just kind of takes care of itself as you're flying through the air. Again, an example. Of when we dig into yeah, something, we don't find out. anything substantial. Okay, because well, I went a little bit old. We'll jump. We'll make a jump. Yeah. Uh... He's still talking yeah. about. Yeah. So, planes. so they go into the actual uh, calculation for for the gun a bit and. It turns out, like, that it talks about how they ha had to tr figure out, like, the drag coefficient of the shells, I believe it is. I, m I might be slightly off because I don't, yeah. but I think it's the drag coefficient. It's the variable <laughs> that they were testing for. Um, and he says because they were testing for the drag coefficient that they didn't know Coriolis, even though Coriolis is part of the math equation and had a value plugged into it. Yeah, that's that's that section. Now, the test was not to determine the Coriolis effect. The test was to, de to determine the ballistic coefficient. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and of course, although we, we, we often <coughs> like to try and neglect the atmospheric effect on the projectile when we talk about ballistics, like an aeroplane, it is still traveling through the atmosphere and it still has drag, you know, it still has drag in all of the directions that it might be traveling in. So, um, you know, you, you, will, you will actually get, you, ugh, 
the fact that the atmosphere is also traveling faster as it's going through it, will the atmosphere will help you a little bit with your Coriolis. Or yeah. the projectile, like a yeah, with a, with a projectile like you like we're talking like he's talking about here, a, a round coming out the the muzzle of a cannon. Uh, but keep in mind that, uh, that that thing is very, very small in, in terms of, of cross-sectional area uh, and very dense. Oh, very, yes, especially compared with an aircraft. So, yeah, yeah now contrast that to an aircraft, which is mostly, well, air, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's not a whole yeah. lot of a lot oh, else yeah, there. Yeah, no, it's, Blue, I'm sorry. I wasn't, I, I was saying that, that even, the, even the shell gets a little bit out. Atmosphere. Yeah, it gets a little bit, but not nearly what, a, what not an airplane. No. An airplane is just confined to travel along with the body of air that it's in. Whatever that air is doing, that's what the airplane's doing. Yeah. Tune and say the right words. It doesn't matter what words I said during that. You would have said, I don't think you understand it and fall back on your position. It's a very weak debating tactic. But I will tell you that this slide right here, which I've got on screen, says that this is an iterative process to determine the ballistic coefficient. First, they Thank set you. C equal to ah, the weight diameter squared, and then Imagine they that. compute a trajectory stop, to ground. Stop, 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 Terry. Stop, Terry. Right. Ballistic coefficient measures how quickly the round slows down. Right. That's all it does. It has... It will have nothing to do with Coriolis whatsoever, apart from, apart from, of course, um, incidentally. But you have the only way you can really work out the ballistic coefficient, the, the, the true ballistic coefficient of a projectile, is to measure it. In yeah, you got to fire test rounds to do it. Yeah, I had the same argument with uh, Rakia last night. Um, when he was uh, expressing great shock and amazement that a 50 caliber round fired at a target 3,000 feet, uh, yeah, 1,000 yards, 3,000 feet away would drop 18 feet. And he, He's, he loudly proclaimed that I was full of shit. I don't know what I'm talking about. No way could a, a round like that drop that much. Well, yeah, it does. It you, absolutely you, does. You want to try firing 30 caliber rounds at a thousand yards. I got out my 03A3 and showed him the pop and made a picture of the, of the rear sight set for a thousand yards. Oh, yeah, that muzzle's way the hell up in the air. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to put, I, I, I literally have the figures on my phone because um, I've got. A, I've got a ballistic table on my phone for a 30 caliber round out to a thousand yards. Kind of handy when you shoot to those distances on a fairly regular basis. And the wind deflection is even bigger, isn't it? The wind deflections are huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Display. The equation of motion are solved for each point using the available data that they have, which means they're just plugging in a pre-computed value for the rotation of the Earth. That computed range is then compared to what they actually observe, and if the range doesn't match, their co ballistic coefficient is adjusted by plus or minus uh, C divided by 16, and another trajectory is computed. If the new range doesn't match, that's that's for distance, isn't it? Not so much for Coriolis. Yes, like we said, it's because because the problem is that um, the ballistic coefficient is basically the drag coefficient, and the drag coefficient changes depending on the velocity region you're working in. Mm. So you 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 can end up finding that um, you go from 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 one velocity regime at one point in the in the trajectory to a different velocity regime uh, with a different ballistic coefficient, and therefore you need to check it. You need to 
check for it empirically um, by testing. You can't just you can't just assume that your that your ballistic coefficient is going to be constant all the way down range. Okay. Well, that's right, and they, you know you, you do these tests not not uh, so that you can come up with these tables because the idea when you get into a real situation is not to lob around out there, see where it hits, and then adjust. I mean, what do you exactly? What does this nut, knucklehead think goes on? You, you just yell down range and say, "Hey, you bad guys, stay right there. We missed. We're going to adjust. <laughs> we'll shoot again." <laughs> what the hell? Uh, you want to hit them the first time, mm. not not have to make that second shot. What we do test and figure things out before. Thanks. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah, kind of, kind of handy, don't you think? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it's always useful to um, compute your tables and then actually, why well, don't know, check that they're check check that your check that the check that the real world actually matches the 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 the, the, um, the numerical model. Wait, wait. Alan, Blue, are you talking about making measurements? Mm, Flurfers yeah. don't make measurements. <laughs> Go press play. Yeah. Press play. Point match. They adjust another. Uh, they adjust again. The process is repeated, always using the last two computed Cs until the computed range matches the observed range. So they are adjusting their equation to match reality. Do you understand now? Is that, I don't want to take your time, are you? Uh, Brandon, you've still got a minute and a half left, Matt. Okay. <laughs> At the end of the day, they are not isolating a value for Coriolis. They are not observing a value for Coriolis. They are not measuring a value for Coriolis. Uh, All blah, they are blah, doing blah. is assuming deny, it deny, based deny. on these other factors, which they can measure in pre-computed values for the rotation of the Earth. And at the end of the day, adjusting this coefficient for ballistics so their calculations for where the round will land match what they actually see. If it was that predict, if it had the predictive quality of telling them where the round would land, none of that would be necessary. They take the calculations, <laughs> write it down on the paper, give it to the, the guys who are going to do the firing and say, follow this. It'll land exactly where you think according to these values. None of this adjusting would be necessary. I yield. What? He just said no, no, no adjustments, but yeah, you're making the adjustments with the calculation because you've got to set the machine to do what it's got to do by the calculation. Well, his his argument here is that uh, we we should know all of the we should be able to know all of the variables before we've ever used the gun, calculate exactly where it's going to hit, and be able to do it the first time. Uh, and and because we tested to figure out uh, what was it the drag coefficient or the the range? Well, the ballistic co the, 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 the ballistic coefficient, coefficient, which Sorry, is essentially I... the drag coefficient. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So so because we were testing to figure out one of the variables, then obviously we don't know what any of the variables are. We picked random numbers, and now we're we're playing funny maths, and and uh, it's all just. Um, matching the cl conclusion or something. And it's just, yes, when you have a math problem and you know most of the variables, but you don't know one of them, there are ways to figure it out. And in this case, you, you have to test it. And this is how they tested it. I mean, when you're looking at projectiles, yeah, like bullets for small arms, for example, which is the one I do, um, there's there's five or six different ballistic coefficients you can choose from, depending on what velocity range the bullet's going to be operating over. Because you would use one for supersonic flight and a different one for subsonic flight, for example. Or transonic, yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah, 
So, yeah, so one for supersonic flight, one for transonic flight, and one for subsonic flight. I don't know what he's getting into here, but we'll jump. Oh, I've seen this before. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm Polaris. muted. Go back a little bit. This is the to Polaris. This is funny. Back a little bit more. Yeah, I'm trying to find a good spot to start. Okay. Uh, uh, objects that are parallel to the surface of the Earth and move oh, away from yeah. the observer recede into a finite vanishing point, meaning their apparent size and distance above the horizon diminishes to the point where they literally vanish into a vanishing point so depending on their height above the earth uh, that will that will determine the angle at which they recede towards this vanishing point your diagram here which is similar to this one based on pure trigonometry uh, pure Luke Euclidean um, math applied to visual space is incorrect because visual space does not adhere to Euclidean physical space. The two are separate, different things. And one of the major differences, wait, wait. according to the Pause. modern science of optics. I don't, I don't know if Clive Wells is still in the chat or somebody else wants to answer, but is, is, is there a difference between Euclidean physical space? I, I don't know what that term means. And, and perspective space. <laughs> like, what he describes there and what he goes on to, uh, just, just to me, makes, makes complete nonsense with the way that he's trying to use it. That's Optics it, you can play. Is a finite vanishing point. On this diagram, let's say this man moves, oh, I don't know, he moves away much further than this. Doesn't matter how much further he moves away, the end of this building is never going to recede into, um, it is never going to get lower than this. You're always gonna have a parallel, a Euclidean physical parallel line drawn on this piece of paper with an angle coming from his position to this corner. You could go back a hundred or a thousand feet off of this page and you would still have that. You would never violate this space down here, meaning there would never be a vanishing point. But in reality, there is a finite vanishing point. And what you get if you apply this Euclidean model to the Earth is you get a sphere. You mistakenly get a sphere because you are applying orthographic Euclidean physical properties to a visual observation and measurement of where Polaris looks like it's in the sky. It doesn't have to be in different places. That's like saying that uh, if I look at some street lights going down the street, that they're going to be in different places. That doesn't have to be in different places. You're just applying the wrong math to the, to the problem. I yield. Oh, my. Oh, my, my. I've got no well, idea what he was trying to. No, he's he's, uh, he's he's trying to claim that that you can't make a uh, that you can't make an orthographic drawing like that uh, like that diagram and have it accurately represent reality when in fact it does accurately represent reality. Yeah, but he's right. he's made a very uh, they 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 they've made a. Uh, um, a, 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 a drawing there which uh, doesn't truly represent anything close to a vanishing point. Of course, you're not going to see it uh, when you look at it like that. Now, yeah. move that guy three, uh, the equivalent of three miles away on the same scale or five miles or 10 miles and see what that angle looks like. Yeah. Well, the other thing is like if it, it, when, it, when he's showing his diagram, like he has just random numbers and uh, and he admits like cats cats makes him admit that he's just put random numbers on there. The, the, the numbers down at the bottom, those are just random numbers. They, they aren't calculated. They aren't, you know, he didn't come to them through through any sort of uh, 
scientific or mathematical process. Uh, they, he just he just picked some some random numbers and said, "Yeah, that that works." And because these numbers don't work out, then then it's not real. <laughs> well, uh, truthfully, Brandon doesn't possess the ability to do those calculations. And why has he got he lines that... drawn from the top of the building down? Like that doesn't make sense either. So, so what he's what he's trying to say is like as you go back, like this will be your angle to the top of the building, and the vanishing point of that top of the building will never go below, or the top of the building will never go below the vanishing point, which would be true if you're on a flat surface, but it does. So there's something wrong. Like if you inch it forward past like cats, because I know you said you didn't want to play cats part, they're going to talk about this for a while and it's great. You haven't really addressed my arguments. You've just whined and cried about there not being enough numbers on the page for you. I'm not sure. I mean, all you showed with math was, oh, Polaris uh, descends towards the horizon or appears lower on the horizon for every 690 miles or one degree for every 669 degrees. And then you've applied Euclidean <laughs> physical trigonometry, as you called it, degrees. to a <laughs> visual perspective. <laughs> hey, one degree that. for every 690 uh, miles. When you do that, yeah, you're applying that. math that doesn't apply to uh, the situation at hand. This is uh, pretty easy to understand, and I don't know where you're struggling. But essentially, but in, in, let me show you the concept. Random, 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 but let me just jump in. In fairness, there isn't anything in the real physical world that hasn't got some form of tight maths for working out a certain element of it. So are you saying then that trigonometry is completely wrong? Because that, I'm not. I'm, I'm not I'm, sure I'm not why trying, you're jumping in this kind of debate, Creaky. I'm not sure why you're now asking a question that seems to support Katz's position, and in, in, in his question that yeah, does yeah, this okay, turn into a two on one? No, no, it's not a two on one. I am here just to just to moderate. And if there's anything I'm not sure or I'm not following, I'm gonna jump in and ask. And if that upsets you, then sorry. But um, you know, you you were saying that you. Uh, the cat is banging on about maths too much. That's because maths is applicable to everything. So I don't see. So you were saying that that sorry that trigonometry isn't a thing that applies to anything you're talking about. Yes, trigonometry does not apply as it's used uh, in Euclidean physical space, such as engineering drawings. When you apply it to uh, visual observations such as these. Now, Katz okay, cool. did make a claim during his last uh, segment which was that we can prove that this is not how it works on a flat plane. So I'd like you to show me an observation that falsifies that this is how it would work on a flat plane over a distance of say, let's go 10 miles. Yeah, so um, essentially, what just so I can clarify what you're saying, and I, I, I'll do this, put it in a video for you, no problem. You're saying that if I, if I choose an object and then move 10 miles back, and uh, what you would say, and apply the the flat Earth view. You're saying what you want me to prove that trigonometry works, or we tell or trigonometry doesn't work. What what is it? Just be specific. No, no. Sorry. I want you to prove that your application of trigonometry, the Euclidean physical space trigonometry, is applicable to a perspective visual observation, such as an object descending towards the horizon at distance. So yeah, oh, over distance. Yeah, sure. And I also no want you to still address the uh, finite vanishing point and how that's possible with your model. Uh, when you say a finite vanishing point, um, it seems to me we start. Um, we, we can get to that, but it seems to me we started talking about Polaris and the angles of the sky. You then produced a graph with numbers on, and you couldn't explain where the numbers come from. You couldn't explain how the numbers were calculated. And then when I started to press you on to actually get, tell me how those numbers were calculated, because you said you can, you can, uh, you've looked at the maths and you can incorporate perspective into this. It, it, it seems like you don't want to talk about that now. You've, you've brought up the point, the the uh, the term vanishing point, which we can talk about. 
But are, am I to assume that we are done now talking about the height of Polaris? Is that something you don't want to talk about anymore? Do you this want to talk about, about the vanishing point? Those concepts are about the height of Polaris. Okay. Um, the vanishing points falsifies your model of how the angles to Polaris would work on a flat plane. Can you, can you explain specifically why? I did. Yeah, and when you did that, you showed a diagram that had numbers on. Those numbers, you never explain where they come from. Uh, we never explain how they've derived. You never explained that you understood anything about the diagram, but yet you're telling me you did explain. So can we go back, and I'll put, put that diagram back on the screen, but this time, can you explain where the numbers come from and what yeah, it actually The numbers means? aren't important. I didn't describe the numbers because they weren't important to the concept. <laughs> Diagram. That's not a problem. It's not a problem. Um, yeah. but I think. I think. We've, uh, I think when it comes to Polaris, ultimately the maths backs exactly what we see. I don't know if I've still got it here, but it's a shame it couldn't go out to the peanut gallery. But I'll draw a picture, but it won't have nothing to do with numbers. I'll, I'll draw some shapes. I'll draw a square and a circle and a rectangle and a triangle and but they've got nothing to do with numbers, so But but I'm gonna I'm gonna put some numbers on them. Uh oh, okay. but don't don't worry about those numbers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll put a triangle of um one, seven and four. <laughs> yeah, don't worry if that works out or not. <laughs> no, 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 no. It doesn't back what we would see on a flat earth, but you're going to say vanishing point without yeah. any explanation of how finite that works. vanishing so, point. Debunk a finite vanishing point, please. Just explain again, just and I will do um, what you mean when you what, when you say a, vi a finite vanishing point allows us to move 111 kilometers and see Polaris drop one degree in the sky. How don't is worry that about that part. Just debunk the oh, finite vanishing point <laughs> don't worry about because that. it debunks your diagram of how Polaris would work on a flat plane. So, so we're, we're into the world of straw. He's, he's trying to ask a confusing question that's. Katz is trying to clarify, which what we're all confused with, and then he yeah. asks us the question, and then Toy just comes back and says, "Well, I'm still asking the question." <laughs> well, you know, one of the one of their problems is. They, they don't understand the words that they use. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, think it, I think that's exactly what it is. It has to be. Uh, Princess Bride. Brandon, I keep saying this word. Yeah, Brandon, uh, poor fellow. Here, here's people say words like vanishing point, and he takes that literally to mm. mean that there's some point out there where something just poof vanishes. Mm. You know, like like the magician, uh, you know, makes the the rabbit uh, disappear into the hat. Now, it, 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 that's not what it is. They don't get it. They they can't con they can't conceive of the idea that nothing ever vanishes. If there's enough light coming from it, it'll just be a pinpoint. It'll just be a point light source. So so obviously. So obviously, if I, if I, so if I talk to Brandon and ask him about any um, um, technical drawing, uh, art class can, type stuff, he won't I ask know what I'm talking about. about. Terry's triangle, please, because I'm sure Terry said he was do a triangle with sides of one, four, and seven. Yeah, but they're going to be equal. Yeah, it's an equal side of triangle, Terry, though. Terry, you can't draw a triangle with sides of one, four, and seven. I don't think. I didn't say I couldn't. I just drew a triangle and I put those numbers there. Jeez. Anyway, what I was saying about what I was saying about this vanishing point and perspective stuff is what I like to talk to them about is in art, is to do with art in drawing and technical drawing. That that part of the conversation you can get to, you can get some meat out of it because they've got no idea that what correlates between what we see and what is actually just done for um, architectural and um, art for, for art drawing. Yeah. yeah. I I uh this this is not flat Earth related, but I also just want to throw out some cool trivia. We have found frogs that can discern one 
a photon of light. Like, human eyes suck, but, like, I don't know. It's just cool random trivia. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else before I play? Play. Okay. Oh, man, man. So basically, <laughs> no, we talked wrong, about this, this is the argument that you made based on trigonometry. I'm telling you a finite vanishing point debunks it, and you have no response. Yeah, the response is it doesn't, and it's just it's made up. Like, I don't. You, you just said the word it's "finite vanishing art. point." You showed a diagram and said "debunk it." Like d debunk what? You've not presented an argument. You've not. Presented I did present an, an argument. You didn't understand the argument, possibly. But I did. <laughs> I made an argument. You present it again. We will all listen. I'll screen share now. You can have your. We'll start again. You you go on your three minutes. <laughs> and can you explain specifically in real detail your your vanishing point argument? I will make as many notes as possible, and if I can't respond on it now, I will make an entire video on it. And if you're right and I'm wrong, I will apologize and I'll shut my channel down. So I'll start <laughs> making some notes now. Please, please, please explain the finite vanishing point again. I'll, I'll right. mute myself. And I'll take screen notes. share your thing, and you can have um, the full three minutes. Off you go. Uh, here we go. Okay, well, this doesn't really take three minutes to explain. Uh, let me bring up back up. Your diagram of how it would work on a flat plane, which is basic trigonometry. So you understand basic trigonometry, I'm sure. And we'll just basic just ignore these numbers on this page, okay? This is just conceptual. <laughs> ignore all this. You don't have to get all. <laughs> that's, that's the whole friggin' <laughs> argument. You got to have measurements and, and everything to to work things out. You can't just draw a couple of lines on a bit of paper and go, yeah. Ah, it's just a number. I don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about those numbers. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about the man behind the curtain. <laughs> oh, dear. Just a number. I, I pulled it out of my butt. Don't worry about that. If he brings up the number four, I'm banning him. <laughs> Pick a number. Any number. It doesn't matter. What if he picks four blue... It's Twist it gone. up in the math. All we need is the concepts. So here I am. Let's say I'm standing 90 degrees under it, looking up. I move Wait away. A Wait a minute. That's a number. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Yeah, he's, he's got a number. Don't worry about the numbers. Yeah, but he said 90 degrees. Does that matter? Don't, a certain don't amount. worry about we'll the numbers. We'll just call it an even amount. Uh. There are even spaces, these colors, right? I look up, and this position never changes. Right? You hold this position constant because this is Where? the Euclidean physical Which orthographic. He's saying it's so, orthographic. So the top, yeah, he's saying that top of that line, that position will never change like if you're on, on a flat earth. Right? Yeah, but and we're you, looking you at it away. orthographically from a side view, from a point to the left. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, this, this, this isn't, this isn't in the perspective uh, because this is just to show the diagram. So, so he's saying like, if you're standing directly underneath it and you look at it, and then you move a given distance back and you look up, it'll be the same. Uh, it'll be in the same place or whatever. Ob obviously, uh, your distance to it and some things change because triangles. Uh, and then you, you move the same <laughs> distance back and it'll be in the same position. <laughs> Kind of, and then you move back, and it'll be in the same position, and that's that's what he's getting at. But the way he's um, drawn it, it's not in the same position. It's more, it's it's more angled that way. The way he's drawn it. Right. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the the drawing's fine. It's the numbers that he's butted up. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say the the, the drawing the drawing is is not in per, in in the perspective of you looking at it because that 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 wouldn't help. But yeah, mm. the the numbers don't help them either. So yeah, I mean if you if if you remove all of the numbers, if you remove everything apart from the horizontal axis, the vertical axis, and then the um, the lines at the various angles, um, there is nothing wrong with that drawing. All of those, all of those angles are correct. Mm. Yeah, and and, um, and you can scale them however you like, but yeah, um, yeah you have to scale them. In, you have to scale things correctly for them to. You can't just put random numbers in there. Mm. Yeah.
Uh, e- Emix po- points out that, but but it won't. The angle would be smaller. Yeah, yeah, the angle would be smaller. There's there's some stuff that I was trying to breeze over to give him, put him in the best possible position, because even in doing that, it still falls completely flat on its face because it's so wrong. Let him repeat the same crap again because I don't think he's going to reword it any different to make it easy to understand. And poor Katz is going to have a full sheet of paper by the end of his end of his first sentence. A diagram, <laughs> such as how if you were building this, let's say this was some contraption you were building, you would draw it out like this. However, what we're measuring in the real world is how Polaris appears. Its distance above the horizon and where we see it based on how we see, which is perspective-based. In perspective-based um, space, there is a finite vanishing point, meaning that at some point, as a parallel, no, something parallel to the... No, no, what? Is that there is no... Yes, in art... Yes, in yes, yes, in art and drawing, but not... Yeah. But but not even in photography. In the real world, there is no fixed vanishing point. They, they argue about that for the rest of the debate, and nobody is quite sure what the fixed vanishing point is. You know, you, yeah, you can draw all those radiating lines out to, to, make, yourself a, to make yourself a vanishing point for, a, for, you know, for an artistic drawing. Or you know, for a painting, mm. but that doesn't mean that there is actually one in the real physical world. It's right there. <laughs> Earth moves away from us. It is going to appear to descend into the horizon. Everything is going to disappear into the finite vanishing point. Can take a look at these trail these trail tracks, even though there's a hill back here. Um, everything will go to a finite vanishing point in your diagram, in your trigonometry based diagram, such as this. There will never be a finite vanishing point. This space between the ground and the parallel path path of object will never be violated. Meaning, this does not match how we actually view the world may match the physical space, but you cannot then say that these are sight lines because you're measuring something. You're applying a physical Euclidean measurement to a perspective-based observation. That's it. Okay, so um, keep screen sharing. You've got your diagram on screen. Um, Just a quick yes or no. These gaps here that I'm, I'm hovering over, are they meant to be even distances as we move back from that building or are they meant to be different distances uh let me see what you're looking at yeah those are meant to be even distances yes so these even distance as we move back an even distance what we are getting uh is a different (laughs) we are getting a different check so for every sort of like 10 miles i move back or whatever um i'm getting a on a flat plane i'm getting a different change uh i'm I'm getting a different angle to to whatever the top of that building is am i that that is the supposed debunk of polaris on over a flat plane or any of these site-based observations at long distance over a flat plane this is so this is your model here that we're, we're reviewing this is your model of how it would work on a flat plane so the difference is what you basically show me here is a series of triangles with somebody who's measured no distances, done no calculation, done nothing, they've just written some angles there. Whereas what I've actually done, and I'll just stop screen sharing, I'll put you here, is put numbers on mine that actually work and that we actually see. The I can tell you how these numbers will be calculated. Listen, I think what we need to do is show why yours doesn't work. So let's do this step by step. The first thing I'd like to ask you, and then we'll apply this to yours, we'll put some distances and stuff to it, is how would you mathematically calculate 
this height to Polaris here? What what equation would you use to calculate this height to Polaris? In the physical world or site based? Just give me some maths. Give me some trigonometry. How would you calculate that height to Polaris there based on the numbers that I've put on this this diagram? Okay, again, we're talking about trigonometry for a site based observation. So this is, Just, this, is my whole, this is my whole objection, is there is a finite vanishing point in reality this, that this is my three will minutes. appear on a flat plane to descend right. into the horizon, whereas on your this model that never takes place. I will pass it back to you in a second. We've done so well to be alternating, and I, I don't mind asking you questions in my three minutes, and I'll give it to you, but this is mine. It's a very simple question. It appears to me very strongly that you don't understand trigonometry. And because you don't understand trigonometry, you don't understand why the what you showed me is rubbish. Brandon, so you've been muted on here, but I, I'll pass it over to you for your three minutes. Um, my last sentence was, because I don't know if you could hear me because you were talking, my, my last sentence was, it's very clear to me that you don't understand how to actually carry out trigonometry, which is why you don't understand why the diagram you've shown us doesn't work. It's your three Katz's argument, again, you don't understand, ignores the argument that I've made, doesn't address any of the points I made, goes back to numbers and trying to get me to do a math quiz during the show, has no substance to it other than to attack me for my can, can inability to conjure... Oh, whinge, 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 whinge. And, nah, nah, and, nah, and, nah. And, he, and he goes on about this like a ton of different times during this debate of of are you trying to give me a math quiz are you you're trying to have me do math you are literally talking about a subject that 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 math is is a key part of and you refuse to do math yes he's going to ask you to do math <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about geometry and angles and hmm. things that are math <laughs> We'll do a little skip. That's all. I do a little skip again. A finite there, there's, vanishing there's a point diagram on possible. here that I really like. Yeah. On, uh, uh, in we're, getting we're, there. we're getting there. Hand it over. You can't. Yeah. And I think that's what we've And why your diagram from. doesn't re represent a finite vanishing point on a flat plane. This is your model. This is your green problem model. And all this going on and on and on about how I don't understand triangles? I mean, that's so essentially, argument. you don't understand triangles. You forgot what you learned in school. That's your argument. So You're real, dude. I, I think I think I think what we've proven is essentially you've brought an argument here based on angles and distances, and you've got no understanding of where these angles and distances have come from. You that's haven't got the truth. well, but it's this is it. This is what flat Earth is. Flat Earth no. is people that understand the very basic stuff thinking that they can come up with fantastically made up arguments like a vanishing point explains the observations of polaris or diffraction explains ships vanishing bottom up they it, they are completely made up points by people that don't understand the very basic so i'm not having to go at you by saying you don't understand it i'm just pointing out you do not understand it please listen to that please you know, educate yourself a little bit on trigonometry and then reassess the model that you've brought and you'll realize it doesn't work. Just a I'll straight give you the ad hoc and character assassination and it, it's just it's ridiculous. How is it an ad hoc? Oh. You don't understand. I, you, you must have forgotten an ad hoc. school. You don't know how triangles work. You don't know how angles work. That's not an ad hoc. Right, it's direct. <laughs> right, I've moved to Brandon and Kat. Brandon, that isn't how we behave on this channel. No kiddie voices. Um, I told you I'd move both of you, which I've now done. I'm going to unmute you now. And Brandon, you get to speak first. Kat, give Brandon a chance. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, so your argument is essentially that I forgot my math from school. I don't understand triangles or angles. And that I'm just a confused flat earther who doesn't understand and should listen to you. That has been your argument for the last 10 minutes. And I got to be honest, it's a pathetic argument. You won't address any of the points that I've brought up. 
why in your supposed debunk of Polaris, which you keep showing and saying is my argument, when it's just a formulation of your argument, that I don't understand why those angles are on there. I know how triangles work, cats. I understand how triangles work. I also know that there's a difference between Euclidean physical space and perspective visual space, which you don't seem to understand and won't acknowledge. So, so, so can I agree. You pause it? Let's move on. So, so just just because because we skipped it and and I don't want to go back to it. Yeah, it must that's have okay. been in, uh, uh, in in his opening thing when they're talking about Polaris. So he shows this diagram at one point where where he's talking about how we're wrong on Polaris, uh, you know, because because we say that for every uh, 60 nautical miles that you move back, it drops one degree in the sky. Um, and and he he comes up with this insane reasoning of, of why that that's not true, that I'm not even going to try and represent because my brain doesn't work that low. Um, <laughs> But he puts up this graph, and it's a guy standing at one point viewing, like, Polaris moving through the sky, and it's, it is the funniest, funniest thing, because it's like, um, Polaris doesn't move in the sky if you stay in the same position, relatively. I, it moves a tiny bit, but it pretty much stays in the same point all you, night. You, 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 have to, you have to have something you can actually measure the movement with you're not just gonna see it right yeah yeah it's 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 just it's just a really funny diagram uh it'd be further up it, it's it's part of this whole mm -hmm. section of the argument so it's it's was just a little bit before we started but you don't have to go back to it it's it's not worth it but i just since we skipped over it i just wanted to give a over view of it because i thought it was funny well of course one of the other problems i have is that they, they, they will claim that Polaris is also close and local. And of yeah. course, the, the, yeah. the, main, the main reason why the main reason why the um, one degree every 60 nautical miles works is because um, if you're working if you're working in units like miles, um, Polaris is effectively infinitely far away. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 funny because like at one point cats ask him, "Well, how high do you think Polaris is?" And he goes, "He goes, I don't know, maybe thousands, hundreds of thousands of miles up, but but it's not billions away." <laughs> it was like you don't know, so it's not this, okay. All right. <laughs> We can continue with Brandon's annoyingness of denying math. <laughs> okay. I'll yield the rest of my time, and let's see you bring some actual evidence to the table instead of attacking uh, what I know, saying oh, I forgot geez. everything wow, from wow, school, wow. don't understand triangles, uh, wrote something on a piece of paper and didn't understand it, and flat earthers, oh, they don't understand. How about some actual evidence? I yield. Okay. Why do I get a feeling that this bloke's similar to Travis in the way he portrays himself with, the, with his vocabulary? I don't know. Well, you, you, you did bring me some evidence. You brought me uh, this evidence here that I'm about to screen share. Um, you told me that you understood perspective and how perspective works. And you just told me specifically you understand triangles. The point I'm making is this explanation you've got to explain away the observations of Polaris is only useful if you understand how to come up with these angles and numbers in the first place. Otherwise, it isn't, it's nothing. You can't tell me you understand your own argument and you understand triangles if essentially you can't do basic, let's find out the length of a triangle. I mean, I don't know where to go with that. I, I can't, I'm not trying to be mean, but if I took my car to a mechanic, and I said to the mechanic, oh, my car's, my car's uh, struggling. There's something wrong with the engine. And he starts rooting around in my glove box and brings out, you know, a spanner and says, oh, look, I've got your engine here. I'm not going to really have any faith in anything else he's got to say. And it's the same here. You've brought me something with numbers on. 
And that's it. You've no idea where the numbers have come from. You haven't got the mathematical skills. You can't demonstrate the mathematical skills to make me believe you know where those numbers have come from. So I'm just going to throw away anything you've got to say about Polaris because it was just meaningless. And I don't mean that. I don't mean to be nasty. It was just meaningless. So you can, we go on to the next, the next point and uh, you can have the three minutes. Right, Kat, just for you to be aware, it's 30 minutes until show end. So I don't know if you want to go into questions or if oh, you want to tackle the next the point. Uh, I don't know if you and Brandon have got a preference or. I'm, I'm going to be honest. The, the next, the next things I was going to talk about was pendulums and how they don't, um, how they don't rely on density, but they do rely on gravity and they change on the way. I was going to talk about the yacht loss effect, but um, you know, we're going to need to, to actually understand a bit of maths for that. And um, okay. I've hammered my head against a bit well enough for that. So let's go. To, I'm happy to go to questions from the chat. Yeah. Brandon, are you happy with that as well, mate? All right. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, so if, Anybody does want to ask uh, Brandon or Kat any question? So we'll leave it at there then. If they're just going to questions from the, the chat. Yeah. Well, Brandon was really happy to get away from the math questions, wasn't he? <laughs> he yeah. He completely he completely dismissed any answer that involved a mathematical wor words at all. Even when Kat's asked him about the triangles, he just. He didn't even mention anything. He just, he's got that, Euclid, what is it, Euclidean space trigonometry perspective, something, whatever he said. Oh, God, the, the Euclidean space one, that, that one hurts me every, he's, the, it's not Euclidean oh. space geometry. Oh, what whatever it is, <laughs> even I can't even say it right, so. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like, what, what are you talking about? Just, yeah, you'll, you'll be okay, mute. <laughs> you'll be okay. It's 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 like the the flirt nope. I was talking to nope. in Jose's channel before I jumped on here with you guys. I was asking him a math question. And he's like, "But can you tell me in this picture where refraction is?" I, I, <laughs> I'm talking about math. Do you guys see the participants well, list in the chat? Donkey. Hmm. Do you guys see the participants list or the chat? Uh, yeah. Ah, good. The chat, yeah. Uh, hmm? Yeah. Not, not the chat. The participants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, in the internal one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's an icon in there that means something. Oh. Oh. I don't know what it means. Mm. Oh. Okay. I think Terry needs a break. I think Terry's going to go and get a cup of coffee, so we've got to keep talking to cover yeah. up for <laughs> it. Well, not only that, but well, we've, we've finished with all the videos, and now... Now we're just going to come down to a bit of a vote from the ch from the peanuts and see if we can work out who, who could we class as a winner. All we hear is kettle going. <laughs> hey, I'll mute while the kettle's going. Well, it's really quite a quite a simple thing to do. Uh, I think uh, it's it's not debatable that. Yeah, we can measure the angle to Polaris pretty readily, pretty easily with a sextant or whatever. Uh, and we know that every time we move 69 statute miles uh, north or south, that angle changes by exactly one degree. Um, draw that out on a piece of paper as if it were a flat plane and try to make those angles work and they will not they'll work at one point and that happens to be 45 degrees yeah and that's the only point where you can actually get the right answer yeah well well that's that's the thing is is the math doesn't work so they have to run away from the math math has to be wrong 
the other hand, and, and that and that uh, you can pick whatever uh, uh, alt. Well, you'll come up with with uh, pick whatever altitude you want for Polaris, whatever, and try to make it work. You just you cannot you cannot make that work. Polaris is all the different. Polaris is at every different altitude there is between zero and lots. It, if you use the actual angles, yeah. Yeah. Didn't did, did you know that, Blue? No, no. Huh? We have a. It's. You, you know how. You, you, you know how. You know about personal domes. Well, this is personal Polaris. Because your you, because your personal dome is going to have a personal. Oh, Polaris okay. On it, isn't it? Per personal dome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh, oh, right, right. That's right. We all have personal domes. Uh, yeah, I was having a hard time following you there for a second. Yeah, sorry. Your, your earphones are a little garbled. So. Yeah, well, it is, it is five to six in the bloody morning here, Blue. I haven't been yeah. to bed yet. Oh. Yeah. Well, oh, that's boy. right. You're usually asleep before I stream later, <laughs> so you're still awake. <laughs> well... Well, to be fair to uh, Scott in the chat, Kiwi keeps saying saying math is is not science. He, he writes, and and to be fair to Kiwi, math it technically is not science. It's the language of science. Hmm. Well, I'm putting a vote in for this Brandon <laughs> toy because of this math problem with this triangle. So I'm voting for Brandon toy. Ooh. I, I kind of want to vote for the first guy because that nonsense was just all over the place. And he uh, listens to Lindsay. Yeah, Lindsay. Okay, so you're going to vote for Lindsay. Well, not Lindsay. The the first guy we we listen the the guy after that that we listened to that was on um, Everett's. The, uh, uh, Everett did Everett. a video. Oh, uh, Everett. That mm -hmm. was uh, flat flat. No, Earth measured. He's a flat earther. Yeah. Earth measured. Yeah, that guy. Okay. Okay. okay well, so you're voting for him. I didn't think he did listen to Lindsay. I thought he, I thought he listened to Spirit Science, which is he bad. seemed to be listening to both and of then them. Bollocks it all up from there. Okay, huge. Oh, sorry, Hugh. What did where did your spanner go? Um, he just is naked. Yeah, I noticed. You don't want to. Yeah. You don't want to. Yeah, you don't. You don't want a naked huge ass out there. That's for sure. No, no. <laughs> sorry, Hugh. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, see, I have some other people right on with me. I vote Aetherons. Yeah, that that Aetheron stuff. That that was that was on a whole new level for me. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the Everett Anderson one. Okay. Oh. Well, that's two. Got that's it. two votes then. If John Giovanni and and oh. Mute go for that guy, that's two for him. Okay. Who? I'm going to go for Lindsay. Okay, Lindsay's who else? still got a bit Lindsay of the just... craziest one that we've seen over over an extended period this year. And am I going to guess which one Paul's gone for? Or do I have to? Lindsay. Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay. Oh, dear. Okay, that, that's a, there's a Lindsay. I think there was another Lindsay out in the peanut. <laughs> we only need three votes to win. So... It, there's there's both vote there's votes for uh, both Lindsay and and the Aetheron guy out of the peanuts. Oh, so it's a toss I up think. between the two. I gotta I gotta take Lindsay. Oh, you've got to take yeah. Lindsay. Yeah. Um, he just I think Lindsay's got in, more votes. Yeah, he excels in every department. It looks like it looks yeah. like we might have a winner. I mean a winner. <laughs> oh, winner, Lindsay winner, chicken or... dinner. I'm glad to see that the um, outside proposal for a for a nomination um, didn't get anywhere. <laughs> what? Yeah, you know, for, for for being an idiot. Oh, the other it, it, person on the thumbnail on the the other person the on upload. The thumbnail, yeah, they, they didn't, they, wait a minute. They, wait a minute. Didn't get a look in. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, where did I hide that? Are, are you talking about the person who got his uh, channel deleted, or was there somebody no, else? No, 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 no. It's um, I've got to remember where I put it now. 
he did <laughs> he, he, he did, he just, did I so it. poorly I that uh, I found it. I found he, it. he didn't even make it into the competition. There you yeah, go. Exactly. I'm, I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased that person didn't make it into the competition. Yeah, that that this way people can actually see what it was. There you go. That was the background. Yeah. Don't ask, don't ask me what those numbers are, Alan. I don't know what they mean, and I'm being serious. Oh, oh, you know. Um, <laughs> well, we've got a couple of equations, and we've got some some numbers, mm -hmm. uh, and the and the units. But we didn't put the units with the numbers. We moved them, we moved them around a bit just to. Just I, to I, I don't things. think I know what three of those faces are. Uh, Scotty Storm down the bottom, and the one to the right is Brian. Um, Mabbit or something. The okay, one yep, those are two of the ones that I didn't know. And the one above that, I think, escaped from the escape, uh, the lunatic asylum, but I'm not sure where they are. That's the, that's the gate, is that the gate, yeah? Shit, <laughs> 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 oh, I'm very disappointed now. <laughs> <laughs> there might be a giveaway directly, you know, by the, by the stuff that's that's attacking the head. <laughs> Just messing with you, Alan. Yeah, I know. You know. Um, yeah, so, Alan. Alan. Uh, Alan. 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 Steve. Alan. Steve. Steve. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so the numbers blue. What, what do you reckon the numbers are? Huh? There's, there's numbers. I mean, uh, we've got two very simple well, equations. Numbers. Yeah. What are the numbers? Come on. What are they? Well, let's see. Uh, Vacuum of space would be one. Yeah. Uh, one oh one three. What the hell is that? Yeah, I know. That one got me beat. Hectopascals. Oh yeah, Port, okay. Fourteen point. We don't. Thing. Yeah, it would be. It would be. We don't use those, so mm. we we're stuck with inches of mercury mm. right now. Well, <laughs> <coughs> yeah. I, I I thought you piloty type people used used a thousand and thirteen. Hmm? Or, or or do you still use inches of mercury in America? No, we or still use in, yeah barometer settings for inches of mercury. All right, the altimeter settings for inches. Okay. So it looks like I'll write. It's the rest of the world that's correct. Yeah. But. Uh, let's see, more down. numbers. 3.99 times 10 to the 8th. I don't know. What the hell is that? There we are. I'll put the wiener out in the Me peanut gallery because we. It looks like that person won it this year. Meters per second? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, speed of light. Oh, okay. Yeah. What are yeah. we looking at? We're looking at the screen. I've shared it. The, on your uh, on the stream, it's super zoomed in, so they can't see the numbers we're talking about. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, okay, might have to go uh, that way. Sorry. Yeah, I'll try that better. You should get it all now. Yeah. Sorry about that, peanuts. I want Paul to tell us about Maxwell's demon. But but blue but blue uh, pressure and force are the same thing. Go to your room. <laughs> yeah, Max, uh, Max was, yeah, yeah, Maxwell's demon was a uh, little demon that uh, was uh, proposed as a thought experiment to uh, illustrate how one might uh, violate the second law of thermodynamics. Maxwell's demon was a little demon that controlled a door, and uh, it was a door into a chamber uh, between two chambers and in one chamber was a mixture of gas molecules moving at uh, both high and low velocity and Maxwell's demon could determine the velocity of the gas molecules and um, he only opened the door to let the ones with high velocity through and so what ends up happening is um, that uh, you end up with one one of the chambers having all the high velocity molecules and one of the chambers having all the uh, low velocity molecules and so you have a hot chamber and a cold chamber 
and uh, that's supposed to um, violate the uh, second law of thermodynamics, as in you have decreased the entropy by doing that. Um, and uh, it, it was um, uh, talked about over many, many, many years, this uh, thought experiment, and it still is talked about today. Um, it has implications for inf information theory and um, all of that sort of stuff. And it turns out that no, it doesn't violate the second law of thermodynamics because you have to include the actual um, uh, process by which the demon uses to determine um, how, how fast the molecules are going in the first place. Uh, that requires energy usage. And right. so you, you're not actually um, uh, decreasing the entropy of the system uh, in any way whatsoever by doing that. So yeah, it's it, it's 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 a very good thought experiment. It illustrates a lot about the second law of thermodynamics. So it's it's rather tricky. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm glad I figured out what the answer was then. That you're doing the, the the opening and closing the door effectively does some yeah does stuff to the system. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but he has to determine in some way that the molecules what the speed of the molecules mm. is um and to do that he actually needs to expend energy <laughs> so he he is actually yeah. part of the system and right. so yeah he, you can't just gotta, think yeah he's, he's got to open the little door he's got to use energy to do all the things he's doing so yeah exactly that's right yeah when yeah. you take the little demon's effort into account there is no violation yeah. there is no violation that's correct yeah it, maybe somebody should explain that to uh, what's what's the flat earther right now that's always going on about entropy. Well, mostly yeah. Nathan Oakley. Uh, is it is it Oakley Oakley? That's, yeah. that's I, I know there was one that there was there was somebody who actually goes to other channels that that kept on about the second law of thermodynamics and and, and entropy. Maybe it's Witsit. So well, Witsit does it. Too. Witsit does it. Witsit has no idea what he's talking about. So. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but neither does Oakley. Oakley no. rails on day in and day out about the second law of thermodynamics violation. Uh, <laughs> because you can't have a pressure next to a vacuum. <laughs> right, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, but but it's just like that that flight from Alaska to Mexico City, right? Like, mm -hmm. the the change in linear velocity is is huge between those two. And how does it uh, look? You read the top of the paragraph and then stopped. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say you understand this stuff. Sorry. It might be a different matter if you were firing. Firing it through a vacuum. Oh, yeah. Well, one thing these clowns don't don't take into account is that it is perfectly allowed for the entropy of a system to decrease. As, as long, long as the entropy it, increases it, somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, right. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. 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 We that's wouldn't the... have a refrigerator on this planet that worked if that weren't true. Or, or yeah. computers or a ton of other things. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll finish it up now that we've finally figured out this year's stronger. This was our first attempt at this, but only because I wasn't streaming properly on my channel and streaming through Alan's. So we didn't get to maybe play this um, Fair Dink and Drongo thing out through the year, but this is what we ended up with so we can we can call Lindsay the winner we'll have to award tradition. feeding him drongo what we'll have uh, to award feeding him drongo points throughout the year yeah yeah Terry. we're gonna have to work it out how to do that yeah and the nominees too sort of thing uh oh well, we'll head over to discord for a bit of an after show coffee whatever you just want to do um We'll do a not Wednesday evening, my time. Seven o'clock's one, usually Wednesday evening, where these guys out there. But we'll do it 
th the Thursday night. Now I put the wrong time on this stream, and I had to come back in and re-correct it because I didn't realise I put the eight o'clock time that I was going to do Thursday night on this one. So I mucked myself up on that one. So it will be the eight o'clock my time Thursday night for New Year's Eve because we'll celebrate New Year before everyone else. By the look of it, so that will be o nine hundred UTC. Mm. So we'll see you all then, and thanks for watching. Um, and hope you've enjoyed the last. Well, this will be the, actually our last normal stream, I suppose, for the year. Thursday night one won't be anything. We'll just be talking shit, I suppose, or, <laughs> or somebody else would talk shit. I'll just listen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and thanks, Alan. Thanks, John. Thanks, Manxel's Demon. Thanks, Big Blue. Thanks, Mute Donkey. Yeah. Thanks, Dark Steve. Uh, John Rap out there. Surf, Shady, Zeblon, Rene Me, Don Giovanni, John Rap, Clive Wells, Stevie B, Huge Ass. Uh, I'm skipping a few maybe here and there. Uh, scrolling up. And I don't know which surf to say goodnight to, because there's bloody two of them. <laughs> uh, Stevie B. Uh, Jinx U. I think I've read, read everyone. RT96. I'm going to miss a few, so if, you, if I've missed I'm you. I'm surf, and so's my wife. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, there's Milkman Dan. RT96, yeah. Uh, surf. Okay then, guys. Who timed out surf by Ze oh, Zeblon? <laughs> Zeblon timed surf out. <laughs> Bye, sir. Or the other surf. Uh, All right, night, guys. <laughs> My peanuts. Good morning, peanuts. <laughs> good, yeah, good morning for you. <laughs> yeah, guys.